Hey. Hello. Hey, we're we're taping part of my take right now. Hey, Greg. Hey, that was PFT. Hey, Greg. Um, we're talking hey. about Monday Night Football, and Hank is right. Hank's taking credit away from the Von Miller block. He's saying it was more the fullback than you. Um, well, it was Monday night. That means it's Monday Night Raw, so we were just out there tag team fools. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank hey, you. So Thank you're you. gonna give, but would you say when we when we pop in the film, that was also a perfect block from you? I agree with that. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. On today's part of my take, we got a twofer for the people. We have recurring guest, Brian Baumgartner. I don't know if I say his name correctly every time because it's Madison Baumgartner. So Brian I kind of, Baumgartner. Ba Kevin from The Office. Great guest. In person. Awesome to have him in here. We also have Kenny Pickett. Pitt quarterback. Maybe potentially top 10 pick. He's climbing up the draft boards. This is, I don't want to say the G word, but it is our grooming process here. We're yeah, getting in with Kenny Pickett why, before Kenny Pickett blows up. Why don't we uh, change like how we phrase that? We're, um, we're baiting him. Yeah, we're, we're becoming friends with him early on enough that uh, when he becomes the starting quarterback for an NFL franchise next year, we can be like, that's our guy. And then after three years, we make him give us 10% of his contract. Josh Allen. Shout yeah. Josh Allen. All right, we're going to talk Monday Night Football, talk some college football, hot seat, cool throne, and then a special Wednesday reading because we're going to do it Monday, but we ran long because it's uh, football Mondays. So pack show for you, and we're brought to you by our friends at Tostitos. Listen. Tostitos has created Romo in your ear, a Bluetooth earpiece that helps a football novice in your life get in on the game. Who's a football novice? That one friend who has nothing to say during the game, always loses in fantasy, has just horrible takes time and time again. During a game this season, one football novice will actually get to listen and repeat smart football -y stuff directly from Tony Romo in real time. I bet you're wondering, is the device a tiny replica of Tony Romo's head? Yes. A teeny tiny Tony Romo is literally going to be in your friend's ear. Tostitos wants to help to find the perfect football novice to win the only earpiece. So if you know someone who could use Tony Romo in their ear, Romo in your ear, have them go to Tostitos.com slash Romo and enter a chance to win. As the official chip and dip of the NFL, Tostitos is helping one football novice get in the game. Go to Tostitos.com slash Romo and enter for a chance to win. Romo in your ear. Tostitos is the greatest chip ever created. Tostitos, we eat it every single Saturday, every single Sunday, every single day. Tostitos, hint of lime, Tostitos, uh, all their salsa, their dip, everything. They're the official chip and dip of the NFL, so thank you to Tostitos. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take, presented by Tostitos. Go right now to Tostitos.com slash Romo to get a chance to win Romo in your ear. Today is Wednesday, November 17th, and PFT, I have a question. Are we sure the Rams are good? Uh, I don't know. I think that Odell Beckham has found himself in a situation that Odell Beckham doesn't deserve. Mm, free and him. I think that we need to have an honest conversation about whether or not the Rams are doing enough to put enough pieces around Odell Beckham. There was a moment uh, during Monday Night Football where they zoomed in on Od Odell Beckham, and I don't, I don't think this is what he was thinking, but I could see someone in his spot thinking this, being like, damn, maybe it is me. That moment where you're like, Maybe I'm the reason for all these toxic no, relationships. Definitely not. That, that's I can guarantee you 100. percent That's not what Odell Beckham was. No, thinking. I know, but it, the face, that's what I would have been. Yeah, thinking. yeah. His face in that moment was like a reasonable person would be like, "Is it me? Right. Is it? Am I the? Am I the one here? Right. Like if hypothetically I had an old show on Sirius that only lasted for one episode, and then after that I had a, C, uh, a uh -huh. show on ESPN2 that lasted for one episode. Only it's maybe, me. Maybe I would start You're to the think one. it's me. I know I have that sort of self-awareness. Odell Beckham does it, but I think in reality, what last night just kind of confirmed for us, which we should, we're so fucking dumb that we haven't realized this yet after how many years you've been, you've been watching football? Like 30? All my I've been life. I've watching football for probably like 32 years. Yeah. My my actually, actually my son for the first time uh, yesterday or Saturday said, Dada, football. And I was like, that's I love it. that. I'm done. He's a football I'm, I, guy. I figured it out. But he didn't want to actually watch. But he just acknowledged the fact that that's all I do. Yeah. No, I think it, he just associates it with like, Dada sits there and he watches football. That's all he needs to know in life. Yes. He's already probably a better gambler than you are. Yeah. Oh, so duh. I I Everyone is. I would think that um, after all this time spent watching football, 
we'd finally understand that like even good teams suck well, in the NFL. The, the amount of parity that there is, there are like three teams that usually are better than the bad teams, but then three weeks a year, those three good teams are actually much worse than even the worst teams. Okay, so I agree with you, and it's true. There's always these clunkers. You saw the Cowboys last week lose to the Broncos. I think the Cowboys are a good team. You, we talked about many times about the, the Packers and what happened week one against the Saints. The Rams, though, I think the Rams, we, we got a little fooled from that week three win against the Bucks. So if you actually look at the Rams, and I think there's a little bit of a, oh, Sean McVay and Matt Stafford, what a great story. They have Aaron Donald. The Rams passed the test of random team you don't root for that you can name a ton of guys from. Yeah. So the random team that you don't root for that you know a bunch of guys on the roster will always seem better in your brain because you're like, well, yeah, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, you know. All those guys, Matt Stafford, Whitworth. You can just start listing all these guys. They're not your team, so you think they're good. But I look back, right? The Rams, if you take out the Bucks' win, which was phenomenal. they this, It goes back to Hank uh, when the Patriots were at their peak of their, their dynasty, and you guys would always make fun of teams that won a big game in September. You'd be like, well, they won the Week 3 Super Bowl. The Rams won the Week 3 Super Bowl. They beat the Bucks. They beat them very, very soundly at home. The rest of the Rams resume at this point they have not beaten another team over 500 mm -hmm. they have beaten a combined so every team that they beat the best team they've beaten besides the bucks is the indianapolis colts their record for the rest of their schedule if you take out the bucks win is 15 39 and one okay they have beaten some of the work they've beaten the lions the texans the bears the geno seahawks and the giants like these are teams that you wouldn't be saying these are the best teams in the NFL, and they've had tests against the Cardinals got smashed, tests against the Titans get smashed, and then go into a Monday Night Football game where I know Billy said it was a clowning. It uh, was not a clowning. Not it was a, a whooping, yeah. and it was man football. Yeah. And we had a sad field goal at the end by it, Sean McVay, it, who it, then did it on site. It was a whooping. Yeah. It was a, it was a whooping, not quite a whooping. I think – well, the difference between these two teams is – the, the Los Angeles Rams are like a basketball team playing football. The Niners are like a football team playing basketball. Or they're a football they're, – they're both basketball teams, but the Rams are playing with point guards and the Niners are playing with power forwards. No, the Niners are, are a football team playing basketball. Yeah, they're just but they're run, power they're forwards. Just, they're just running you over. George Kittle on Von Miller. Yeah, now that was be careful, Big Cat, incredible. because we have, a, we have a truther. We have, oh, we have a highlight 22? truther in the house. And, of course, it's Hank, yes. our resident hater on all of our friends. he hates all of our friends. Yeah. I actually, this is because Do you I, already hate Kenny Pickett? This is because I care about our recurring guests. Okay, yeah. I don't know if you guys remember. Uh, Von Miller has been on this show multiple times, had some hilarious moments. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. His dad, he called his dad. So like so that, don't I don't, I'm confused by you're right, your statement. You're right. Actually, you're right. I mean, and if you, you watch the video, I love George Kittle probably more than you guys. He won me no. money. I bet him no. the first no. touchdown Fact, that no. hit. No, no I love him so much. I, I told him some honest truths when I said National Tight End Day has become too commercialized. It's yeah. like the Hallmark holiday now. We need to get I, back. That's his to holiday. I, you're hating. Yeah, no, so no. I'm just hater. saying. We honestly, we need. It's a great holiday. Well, if you make a holiday, become, why wouldn't you commercialize it? That's the fucking point. Because it dilutes the meaning of the holiday, Hank. I love him so much. That's what holidays are. I love Do you love Valentine's Day? Do you think Valentine's Day is still a lot of fun? When you can't no, get a I don't anymore. Anywhere? No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, damn. Shit. Got Sorry. you there. I, oh. I love George Kittle so much. Uh, I, I bet him shoes on Iowa, Wisconsin, and I thought for a second I wasn't going to make him pay, but then I, I'm going to make him pay. But that's how much I love him. Anyway, I watched the video, clicked the video. It's like George Kittle, pancake block. And you can just see the fullback run full speed into Vaughn Miller, and that's what tipped him over. I love George Kittle. I think he would agree. I think if we called him right now. No, his hand placement was perfect again. on the block. Look at this again. It it if you watch it, it is very clear that, you know, they're going back and forth. The what do you call it? What's it called, Billy? The chip block? The chip block was very clearly what tipped Von Miller. He did over. not No, no, the chip block pushed him off to the side, but are are, are we going to take that out on Kyle Juszczyk? It's one it's one and a half for his one. assignment. No, now? I'm not. I'm just saying People are clowning Von Miller unnecessarily. It's not fair. No, that's Forty Nine ers football. They have they're doing the thing that they great, always it's, do. It's a perfectly executed chip block. Okay, yes. so the 49ers yes. always do this, where they have all their players, their wide receivers, their running backs, their tight ends. Everybody plays in that offense at times like they're an offensive lineman, and it's a beautiful thing to watch when the running game is working like that. Dude, and that's what we saw last night. The fullback I, helped, but yeah. this was uh, like 
George Kittle got his hands at the perfect place and drove him through Von Miller. One hundred percent. I just think it'd be a lot different. I would. I would. Speak differently about it oh, if it was a yeah, one versus him. one. It was we'll, a one and we'll a half. It was a one and a half versus one. We'll settle this. Okay, but you know what? He's such a good guy. He's probably going to be. He's going to give nine thirty local time. I already texted him this morning because I I need those shoes. I got to resell them. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Is your phone on? Yeah, go, yeah. go oh, speaker. Shit. Sorry. Hey, hello. Hey, we're we're taping part of my take right now. Hey, Greg. Hey, that was PFT. Hey, Greg. Um, we're talking about Monday Night Football, and Hank is Hank's taking credit away from the Von Miller block. He's saying it was more the fullback than you. Um, well, it was Monday night. That means it's Monday Night Raw, so we were just out there tag team. Thank you. Okay. Thank hey, you. So Thank you're you. gonna give? But would you say when we when we pop in the film, that was also a perfect block from you? I agree with that. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. Okay, yeah, Greg, wasn't your hand placement perfect on that block? Uh, my outside hand was a my my inside hand was a little outside, but you know if you as long as you keep your feet running and uh, moving vertically, they're not going to call holding. Uh, last question: If you played a game of pickup basketball tomorrow, and we gave you ten fouls and then you're fouled out, how quickly would you foul out? Ten possessions. Okay, perfect. perfect. All right, thank it. you. All right, love you. Goodbye. Yeah, see you guys. All right, see ya. Bye, Greg. All right, so we okay, settled that settles tag team. Both arguments, really. Yeah. We both, we all were right. Everyone's right. Sure. As Good usual job. Hey, on the show. Hey, up first, yeah. <laughs> That's some analysis you don't get everywhere else. Never been wrong. Damn. Never been owned online. Nope. <laughs> um, all right, but yeah, I think the Rams have a real problem. I don't know. I've been uh, the person who has talked the most about Matt Stafford's uh, legacy and the numbers that he's going to amass, but Matt Stafford, he and, and it sucks for the Lions because they keep getting ricochet shots. But when he plays poorly, it's Lions Matt Stafford. And you had the bonus of him running five yards past the line of scrimmage last night, strafing like he's in Call of Duty, mm. and then trying to throw a pass. Well, he ran backwards. I, yeah, well, he he, he went cross forward, and then he was like backwards, psyched. then he strafed. Yeah, he pulled a psych and tried to go backwards, and then Philip Rivers was like, "That is, it was perfect that Philip Rivers was on the Manning cast at that point because that is a play that Philip Rivers would make. Yes. that's like right out of his playbook. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Matt Stafford might be. He didn't look healthy last night. Oh, you do that for him? Yeah, I think that I might be nice. the first to do that. Nice. I mean, if you saw his throws, though, he didn't look like the Matt Stafford that we know. Part of that is because they don't have Robert Woods anymore, and Odell Beckham. Every team's got injuries. Odell PFT. Beckham is not Robert Woods. Every team's got injuries. Odell Beckham does not deserve to play on a team without Robert Woods. If he knew that Robert Woods would not be on that team, Odell Beckham never would have signed that contract. I'm just saying. Free Odell. My point is, we anointed the Rams very quickly because we love it. We love the story. We love Matt Stafford. We love McVay. What can he do? He's unleashing. We love the fact that they dominated the Bucks week three. Looking at what they've done, and, and the nice thing about the NFL is we get to prove it all because they play against the Packers in a week after their bye week. But I, do, I am officially moving the Rams off of a team that I feel strongly about that could go to the Super Bowl. Okay, so they might not go to the Super Bowl, but we also should have seen this coming a little bit because this happens I feel like every year. Like Kyle Shanahan, if there's one coach that he owns, it's Sean McVay. Yeah. So the, the Niners stink But the at home. this is the Titans loss, too. They haven't – yeah, but they, yeah. I'm saying Kyle Shanahan has not won a game at home in the last, I think, two – I think he's 0-8. It was 0-8 in the last eight. In the last eight, with the exception of when he plays Sean McVay at home, and he's 2-0 and But I'm – yeah. At that I, point. I, I just think – I think that it, it's – we, we can't overreact the other way and be like, the Rams stink, throw them out of here, they're awful. No, no, they don't. we're going to see them play. Wait, they don't stink. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is I'm. this is not just last night. It's the Titans game, too. The Titans did the same thing to them. And then I looked back and I was like, why, why do I keep thinking the Rams are a Super Bowl contender? And then I looked at their schedule and I'm like, what, has, what have they done besides that week three win that shows me that they're elite team? And, and there's... You're right. There's a lot of teams that can beat, you know, it's any given Sunday. But I think the Cowboys and the Packers and the NFC, I feel confident about. And I'd throw in the Bucs just because you never count out Tom Brady. And the AFC, I would say the Titans, the Ravens, and the Patriots. And if you want to throw in the Chiefs, oh, yeah, the Bills. We keep forgetting about the Bills. They lost to the Jaguars. That was it kills a me. We're just doing a bit with it's the a bit. Bills right now. But I think I'm, I am officially taking the Rams out of my feel confident I could see a world where they get to the Super Bowl. Well, because they're they're soft. They are. The Rams are soft. They're they're a basketball team playing football. And we know all their names. And they'll be yeah, they'll be able well 
every every like five years, we need to have a reminder in our brains that whatever coach is now starting to put together dream team like situations, just assembling all the good old players like it's fantasy football. We just need to remind ourselves that as good as it looks sometimes, that it's not actually a good way to build a team no. for the long term. No, there's never been a team that's had like a prolonged, like a, a successful, you know, three or four seasons. Based off just signing every free agent, correct, and collecting everybody else. What are you gonna say, Hank? I'm not a math guy or a nerd, but the odds, you know, there's never a home team Super Bowl until last year. The odds of it happening two years in a row have to be That's pretty, pretty fucking zero. high. There's zero. No, I'm saying it's the odds. Happened. I'm saying the odds of it happening two years in a row have to be crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's zero because it's never happened. I don't right. think that's how odds back work. to back. Yeah, no, that's how. No, if it, if it something's is. never happened, it will never happen. Yeah, zero. That's how we do all of our gambling. Got it. Yeah. Um, I don't. I. I just. I, yeah. I know the overreacting, but I'm. I am taking them away from my top three teams in the NFC because we've just thrown them in. Cardinals. The Cardinals are are better than the uh, Rams right now. They've dealt with a bunch of injuries. Let's play a game called Who's Harder because we've already established that the Rams are are soft yeah. at times. The Cardinals kind of have that softish vibe to them sometimes. But they can kind of run hard? the ball sometimes. Are the Cardinals harder? I think the Cardinals are harder than the Rams. I think they are too. I would say I would say that the Seahawks might be harder than the Rams. Yeah, they might be. Mm -hmm. You're right. They might be the softest team in the West. The Buccaneers, harder, harder. softer? Harder. Absolutely. When I, their defense is playing, like, their defense has a shitload of injuries, mm -hmm. but... I just think of what they did to the Chiefs and like how hard they hit everyone. And they're a team when they're playing, when their defense is clicking, they're a team where I start to like actually worry about the other team's health. Mm -hmm. Saints. Saints are harder than the absolutely. The Saints are no longer the Saints used to be the soft team of like the soft good team of the NFL. Mm -hmm. That is completely thrown out the window. They're hard as fuck. Yeah, I think the Giants are harder than the Rams. Yes. Yes. Easily. So who's softer? Texans. Uh, Texans soft. Texans well, I'm just talking softer. strictly NFC teams. Okay, strictly Out of all NFC. the good NFC teams, I think they're the softest. They're the softest. Yeah. Yes. Mystery yeah. solved. All right. Uh, let's talk some... Oh, we also had, speaking of the Cowboys, uh, the monkey butt game. Uh, we knew, we called it, that Mike McCarthy was going to get into his bag of tricks. Uh Passing around monkey butt. It was red ass week. In yeah, Dallas. yeah. It was red ass. The so guy is out like calamine lotion and talcum powder. Credit to Mike McCarthy. He's kind of realized that X's and O's and timeouts are not his thing. So motivation has to be. Yeah, no, he's doing a great job. He's pulling out all the stops. This is officially Mike McCarthy going like leaning in a hundred percent to the stuff that Jerry Jones will never tell him how to do. Mike McCarthy is essentially just PJ Fleck of the NFL now. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to build this program. Yeah, we're guess what we're going to do. We're, there's, we're gonna have a word of the day every day, <laughs> and then I want somebody to do something a practice that reminds me of that word. Yes, we're reaching just like motivational quotes on the wall, Mike McCarthy. Yeah, and Billy, you said you had something that you were gonna say about about monkey butt and about red ass week. I what remember when I told you about red ass week, you were saying like something about the ingredients in the monkey butt formula. Oh, monkey butt's actually like great for chafing. Oh, nice. It's yeah. just like an actual great product. I just love that free ad. That's okay. Send Billy some monkey butt. Yeah, I love that. That what is? McCarthy. I honestly don't know what monkey butt. So is. it's like gold bond, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like a liquidish gold bond type thing. So the the what Cowboys got their ass kicked so bad by the Broncos that he declared that it was Red Ass Week around Dallas. Need some monkey butt around so here. So he put up like pictures of baboons with their giant buttholes. There's those like red giant buttholes everywhere, and he's like, put this on your butt so it doesn't get chafed. Yeah, you got your butt. Smash. It's next level football uh -huh. stuff. Yeah. And what happened? <laughs> I'm fired up. They came out and won. Yeah. They came out and killed Dude's the Falcons. Due to supply chain issues, Joe Biden hasn't been providing enough watermelons <laughs> in supermarkets. So Mike McCarthy was like, He's, I can't smash anything. He had to Might go as well get some monkey butt. Plan B, monkey butt. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I, I'm a full on believer in the Cowboys now. Like, and you're. Yeah, no, I have, I've been for the majority of the year. Like, they are, when they're clicking, they, got, they have every piece that you need. To play with the top teams. This is 100% what you need Mike McCarthy to be doing to optimize success for your team. is keeping him away from all the actual play design and it's, play calling. It's also, and now I'm going to knock on wood for the Cowboys fans out there because I don't want to jinx it, but it is nice because the Cowboys have always felt like the team that every single year it's like they had all the talent and then, and then people got hurt. And now you're actually seeing all the talent on the field. Yeah. Like Ma Michael Gallup coming back, which is crazy that they, you know, a team with this many offensive weapons just adds Michael Gallup. They have everything. I also think it'd be fair to say that if Mike McCarthy wins a Super Bowl in Dallas, 
you can pretty clearly point to the fact that Aaron Rodgers is a system quarterback and only won his national championship with Mike McCarthy as his head coach. And that would be that would be the first wouldn't that be the first head coach to win with two teams? I'm pretty uh, sure. Probably. Let's I think see. it's the first it would be the first NFL head coach to win a Super Did Bowl. Did Belichick win one with the Browns? <laughs> with two different no. teams. I don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. Huh. Who would have who would have won with two different teams? I'm either it's there's either a very obvious one I'm completely missing and I'm gonna sound like a total fucking idiot, or I am absolutely correct and I pulled this one Andy out of my Reed monkey came butt. Close. Pulled this one out of my monkey butt. Jake. I'm looking. There are six coaches who have taken different teams. Yep. But one with two different teams. I don't think so. I think I'm correct. I don't think so. I think you could just Google has a coach ever won a Super Bowl with two different teams. Yeah, it's just this article. And if I Google it, Jake? Vince Lombardi. No. Who are the coach? The coach for Denver. Don Shula. Uh, John Fox lost both. Yep. Yep. Nope. It, Mike it Shanahan. Hasn't no. No. Bill Parcells went two and one. Nope. Nope. He win? Nope. 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 Yep. Haven't Don done Shula, it. Haven't four. done it. I was so good. so far no coach has ever won a Super Bowl with two different franchises. There we, there go. we go. So I but so I So Mike I, McCarthy would technically be the greatest coach of all time. Well, he would be a very good coach and it would also <laughs> diminish Aaron Rodgers' legacy is what I'm of getting. Of course, at. of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything. Uh and Skip well, you know, Bayless would be so happy. Hot seat cool throwing we talk about legacies and institutional chaos. I just I I want to see Skip Bayless just happy for once in his life. Yeah. I want to see him just experience pure joy. Well, no, Saturday night date night with Ernestine when they sleep in the same bed. Yeah, well, it's in the same room. Same room. They push the beds yes, together. Yes. Uh, all right, let's do some college football talk. We're getting down to it. Two weeks left in the regular season. I think, Cincinnati fans, you are now officially in we will get totally, totally screwed zone because Oklahoma's loss was enormous for Cincinnati, and the way it's shaping up, I think Cincinnati could could actually do this. I think they could actually do this. I think there's enough losses out there that they could actually do this. I still think they wouldn't get over a one-loss Power 5 team, no. but I think they could do it because I think there's enough losses to be spread around that they could actually get in. I don't and they haven't done anything on the field to actually make us be more confident in it. It's more than everyone else. Right. The, even their wins haven't been that impressive. No, I, they haven't I covered still, the spread in I, forever. I still think it's going to be – so a Big Ten team's going to get in. Yeah, so it's going to be – And we're going to have to wait. We're, we're recording this right now before the rankings come out. Yes. But we can tell just from what they've done in the past that they do not like poor schools. They do not like non-Power 5 schools. Correct. I think the so rankings They're, they're will... looking for an excuse to keep Cincinnati out. The only way that Cincinnati would have a chance, in my mind, to get in is if they had just absolutely dominated for the last three weeks, which they haven't done. No, so I, I've been – Crunching the numbers, looking at everything. They obviously need Oregon to lose, which could very well happen in Utah this weekend. They need uh, Alabama to lose to Georgia, and they need basically Oklahoma and Oklahoma State to play to a tie because that's that's how the Big 12 is most likely going to work out is if Oklahoma State beats Oklahoma, they then rematch in the uh, Big 12 championship game. Mm -hmm. So Oklahoma State could run the table – and maybe get in, but it would be against the same team. They won two games in a row, and people would probably look at it side eye, being like, "Well, what does it prove? It just proves that they're better than Oklahoma State twice." I still think what what's going to end up happening, and it'll be very funny to see, is the SEC championship game, Georgia Alabama. It's like forty to thirty eight. Georgia wins, and they keep Alabama as a two loss team. So in the in the top four, I, and so the problem they, they is they might even put them at number three. Yeah, so they couldn't they, put them at four, so that they wouldn't have them play each other again it's, one week after the other. It's I, if there are if there are multiple losses that go down the lines, I could see it happening. If there's multiple one loss teams in Cincinnati, I don't think they would do it. They've uh, they've never put a two loss team in the playoff, and that tricky spot of do you put Alabama at four and make them rematch again? So I was having this debate. People are saying, well, Alabama's at two. So that if they lose, they would just drop to four. I actually think it's the reverse way. I think Alabama's at two. So if Georgia loses, they drop to three, not four. So you avoid the rematch. That, that that's how it's that settled. probably happens too. Yeah. But I also think that if Alabama loses in a very close game, they might just drop to number three. What what I thought you were going to say, and which would be very very funny, well, I have, and very I have, college football. I I think I know what you're about to say. It would be 
Notre Dame sneaking yes. in over Cincinnati, yes. which I would be the most wrong thing of all time, but also would be the funniest thing of all time. So it'd be hilarious because obviously Cincinnati beat Notre Dame uh, it, in at South Notre Bend, Dame, yeah. But Notre Dame gets in because again they keep not, winning. They're not poor, and they keep winning, and they get to they get to uh, hypothetically number four. They play Georgia and get beat by sixty. That would be the most hilarious possible outcome. Either That's way, what I'm rooting for. Either way, um, we're going to have some fun last two weeks of the college football season. I do think I still am inclined to think they're going to try to find a way to fuck over Cincinnati. But looking at it, I think Cincinnati is almost like just by the fact that everyone's going to lose to everyone, they're going to find a way. It's going to get to a point where the committee will like oh, in a Wizard of Oz moment, they will have to either reveal themselves to being like. There was if everyone had four losses, Cincinnati still wouldn't get in, or they'll just have to let Cincinnati Cincinnati in. I don't think because if you have everyone catching two losses and you still keep them out, then everyone's like, "What's going on?" I think the committee's just going to be like, "Hey, we're a made-up group of trolls that live in a room, and we can do whatever the fuck we want because we have no actual accountability." So here's your final four. You're going to talk about it, and you're going to enjoy it, America. I I do think that uh, in terms of the rankings that are going to be released later on tonight, I think that's probably going to stay status quo in the in the top six, knowing that the committee can just bump Michigan over Cincinnati if they do beat Ohio State. Yeah. They might move them to five because they beat Penn State, but it's going to be essentially it's going to be the same six top six in whatever order. And Georgia also just keeps destroying everyone. Yeah, so, unless there's a transparent formula, they're not going to. They never have to actually explain themselves about anything. They can come up with whatever stat that they have to justify the order that they want to put these schools in anyways. Yes, I'm officially done ever thinking that uh, anyone can score on Georgia. They're, that w- that first drive by Tennessee, they should put that in like uh, they should put it in like the Hall of Fame at Tennessee. That first drive was fantastic. And then we've got it, a blueprint, big cat. Yeah, all you have to do is there. you have to play a the entire game. Plays. Like they played that first drive, and the most of the first quarter was not bad for Tennessee. But there's just no way that you can keep up with that Alabama defense Ten- for that long. Tennessee, I would file Tennessee under a team that is uh, now competent at a lot of things, which is a good step in the right direction. Yeah, no, where like they are, they can. Co- they there was no moments in that game. Where it was like, oh my God, what is Tennessee doing? It was just Georgia was better. Yeah, for Tennessee fans, you have a great off season ahead of you. You have an off season of actual anticipation because you've got a lot of stuff that you've built up right now. So you can look forward to next season as that's our year where we're actually going to be good. Yes. Um, also, just going to throw out one last thing. Uh, just throwing it out there. Michigan beating Ohio State and then Wisconsin beating Michigan in the Big Ten Championship game. The maximum chaos. Then you probably got to let Wisconsin in. And Notre Dame. <laughs> and Notre Dame. Um, all right, should we do hot seat, cool throw? Any other college football notes? We, yeah, justice for UTSA. Yeah, UTSA I've, I've had them in my top ten the, the last three they're weeks. They're getting boned. I UTSA think UTSA needs to be – just put them in the top ten. You cannot ever think to include them in the in the final four in the playoff when it comes down to it. But just let people that, that went to school at UTSA look at their logo on television for a while. Can you imagine if you're, if you're a UTSA alum – when is the last time you get to see your full logo prominently meep, meep. displayed on ESPN? You, I heard, Probably never. I heard that the committee is keeping them out of the top ten because a certain grad refuses to get creamed. That's what I heard. Michelle Beadle? That's what I heard. That's all I heard. Hmm. So Maybe shave the beard, chaps. Um, also, UT, UTSA, we, we often uh, talk about watching one game and being like, oh, my God, this guy is incredible, and then sticking with it forever. UTSA, number four on UTSA, their wide receiver is Calvin Johnson. And now, obviously, he's not. But when he played against UTEP, and I watched that entire game, the whole time I was like, this guy is unstoppable. He's incredible. How is he not a top five pick? Mm-hmm. Uh, put him in the top ten, committee. Put uh, him in the top ten. Ole Miss. Lane Kiffin just is a fucking maniac, isn't Dude, he? I'm so – I love Lane Kiffin, but God damn it, man. Someone has to explain to him that it is okay every now and then to kick a field goal. No, no. Lane is just like, fuck it. Seven is more than three, Big Cat. Look it up. Every time. Every time. There was that, that – in that fourth quarter, they should have been up by two scores, and they did a fake field goal after also passing up a field goal from, like, the five-yard line. Mm-hmm. It's just – it's just basic math that, like, hey, man, you don't have – and, again, I think that it also is demoralizing for your defense. I think yeah. it's demoralizing for your team when you fail on fourth downs 
repeatedly and you have to trot back out there and be like, fuck, well, we could have had three points. Mm -hmm. Not every time you got to kick a field goal, but he's gone all the way to the other end where he's, kicking a, he's allergic to kicking field goals. Yeah. Uh, it's fun to watch sometimes, but it's also very confusing because when I'm watching, sometimes Lane Kiffin makes me feel like I'm really dumb, that I actually don't know yes. how football math works. But he actually has learned so much about football math that he's chosen to forget all of it. Yes. That's when you know that you master something. Yes. Um, all right. Let's do Hot Seat Cool Throne. Hank, you want to start with Hot Seat Cool Throne? Yeah, my hot seat is uh, Danny Ricardo slash everyone in the F1. Um, we it's coming down to it. Three races left. It is coming down push, to push. it. Push, push. Push, Great race on Sunday by Lewis. Can't wait to watch it on Netflix. I really enjoy uh, – yeah, I don't I don't watch the races either, but I like to go into the uh, Instagram comment section of official F1 and just the, the people get really upset. Hating Verstappen, hating Lewis Hamilton. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very, very funny. Passionate. Yeah, very passionate. But we released uh, our Muggsy Grand Prix video. <gasps> yeah. It came out yesterday, so it's out now on part of my take YouTube. Ooh. We raced. Uh, we did a race, me, you, and PFT yeah. racing in uh, recliners. Do you think? What do you think Dan Daniel Ricardo would say about the fact that you just cheated? Oh, spoiler. Well, that's well, I mean, you that's, probably already watched. I was looking hopefully. for an advantage. I didn't cheat, but I did have the best. I did have the best driving. That was like that was, a, that, was a, a that was a non driving part aspect. Yeah. Well, no. Oh, skipping a lap. Well, was you a... cheated off the bat. You How? literally cheated. Uh, they no, said not no, to bump actually, into people. And you literally actually, started by actually, ramming your car directly into Hank, my spinning Hank me out. turned to me and said, "Are you going to try to run me off the road no, to no, no, start?" No. And I you said, "Yes." I. After we, they had a safety meeting where they're like, make sure at the safety right. meeting, at the but safety meeting, we all agreed. And then, yes. and then wait, wait, Hank wait, wait, asked wait, 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 wait. And then Hank asked, wait, me. at the safety meeting, yep. we all agreed yep. not to run into each other. Yep. But that's not a rule, right? That was us agreeing not to do it in I, front I, of the safety. I guy. was going to run into Hank if Big Cat didn't. Big Cat took him out, and I I see daylight. I push, and also I never said a lie. I said it in front of the safety guys because we had to do it so we get in the car. They were freaking out. That was so stupid. How like anal they were. Hank looked at me before the race. He said, "Are you going to try to ram me at the start?" And I said, "Yes, I am." And and, and then I did. <laughs> even if you had lied to him, that's not cheating. But but lying. I was very honest. I was yeah. very honest. There's to a him. difference between lying and cheating. We'll get to Dan Orlovsky later. <laughs> Absolute dirtbag move. Anyway, but my driving was so superior that I came all the way back. I had some trouble after that, which you know I was forced to to, to look for any edge I could get. That's besides the point. Including we tape, subtracting we, laughs. Did we taped that four years ago. <laughs> it feels like it. <laughs> It was, it was hot out. It was hot. It was very yeah, hot. I, I was all my sack off. Yeah. Either way, drive, move the day, drive the day. Not you know, make your own, make your own decision. But that's just a fact. Okay. Okay. Uh, so go watch that video now. My cool throne. Oh boy, what the fuck? I don't have anything written down. I forget. Okay. Okay. Billy. Uh, you, you throw me an extra plus? one. Army throw, throw, me an cool throw, me, throw me something. Uh, throw me an extra one. NFTs. Billy's got his NFTs. He's yes. releasing as an yes. experiment. That was actually was what I had. Uh, uh, NFTs. Billy, yeah, the Billy other ones. An NFTs African bullfrog. Oh, no, 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 it was an experiment. I, no, yeah. no, I don't. I didn't want to plug that. Right. You've ruined the experiment. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, oh, because it was like it was like out. it was like a joke. No, like, don't worry. Tw I, wanted, so the 2016, I want people to pay me money as a joke. The 2016 part of my take <laughs> NFT collection is coming out soon. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, but also you have your personal NFTs as an experiment. Yeah, no, the personal NFTs. A, no, it's a bit. We're supposed to yeah, it's a scale. bit. It's it was, a bit. I was trying to see how well much money you can take from the, our listeners. Th not. That's why I was as an experiment. It's an investment for the listeners. It's a test. It's a trial balloon. Marshall Henderson. He's presenting an investment opportunity. I like it's just art. the way he phrased it was so it funny. Is this is an experiment. I like the money it. is real that you're gonna have to pay for it. <laughs> I'm but experimenting. The idea is an experiment. I'm experimenting with light fraud. I was yeah. okay. It's not yeah. fraud. It's art. I'm selling a little. I'm art. dabbling I'm an in fraud. artist. Let's do an experiment. How many of our listeners can mail us a hundred dollar bill? <laughs> <laughs> it's an experiment. All right. Uh, good. Good. Cool throne. Thank good you. Job. I'm gonna, uh, this happened the last week. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember mine. Okay. Soon enough. Uh, PFT. My hot seat is my own investments. Oh, and I'm you not talking. No, I'm not talking about the frog. I would never buy a frog. Um, I'm talking about my financial uh, stake that I own in the Green Bay Packers. Yes, because number one, shares are being diluted today. They're selling, I think, three hundred thousand shares of them for three hundred bucks. Again, that's not fraud. Yep. Um, and also, uh, not only they're being diluted, but there's apparently fine print on them now that says. By buying these, you're not allowed to criticize Roger Goodell, the NFL, or any of the teams in the NFL. Mm -hmm. 
and the punishment is up to a five hundred thousand yes. dollar fine. Yes. Now I don't think I've ever criticized Roger Goodell or any teams in the NFL. Is that real? I don't know if it says it on the thing. I know that if it's you part buy of shareholder it, agreement, technically Roger Goodell, like if you bought it and committed a crime, Roger Goodell could fine you five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, personally. Yeah. Roger Goodell can fuck your wife. I also if you own <laughs> a, st- a, a share of stock in the Green Bay Packers. The Packers stat stock, which I like to make fun of, I'm now it's now been ruined because. Uh, the man who shall not be named wrote an article about how these stocks mean nothing and they don't actually gain any money. The man obviously being Darren Ravel. Uh, he, for a brief moment, made me actually side with the Packers. No, it's- Because I was like, I, we like to make fun of Packers fans, but I would say 99.9% of Packers fans who buy this the stock, no, it doesn't actually mean anything or any chance of increasing in value, it's just to feel part of a team. Ravel had to explain that and tell them how it was actually a bad Mm -hmm. financial decision. You ruined it for everyone else, you fucking nerd. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to go selling my personal share of the stock anytime soon. Yeah. Because stocks always go up. And I feel like... But I did short it today. I shorted the stock because of those reasons and also because... Those motherfuckers cut Blake Bortles. Yes. They Did released him yesterday, and it's bullshit. They used him. They used his body. They used his brain. They used his playbook that he brought over from, from the Seahawks. A curse on the Green Bay Packers. Yes. Um, your cool throne. My cool throne. Well, let's see. I was going to drop Mike McCarthy on you guys. Um, but instead, I'll just say cool throne is Hank's spare time. NFTs. Oh. Mm. oh. Yeah. <laughs> NFTs. Billy's... Doing an experiment. Cool throwing his Hank's, Hank, Hank's spare time because uh, Tom Brady has his Man in the Arena show coming out. Mm-hmm. Oh. And not- a new Halo dropped. I forgot we should have mentioned that to, to Kittle. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. So not only is there the Man in the Arena, the show, but there's also a post show with like Teddy Bruschi talking about the show they just watched. Fuck yes. A lot of show. And then there's a post post show talking about the post show. And then there's also a podcast Love about it. the show. That's coming out. So That's Hank is good. Hank is book solid. Man. When do you guys want to do recaps? Wednesday or Friday? <laughs> yeah, six, right after succession. We're waiting for a succession recap. People talk in a room. Uh, That's my succession got, recap. Uh, the deal almost gets made, then it doesn't. Tune in next week. I haven't even seen this. <laughs> That's, That's, so That's every single week. <laughs> Kindle is sober, let's, but he's acting like he's fucked up. Let's stand. Let's stand. What will the shareholders <laughs> think? Let's stand about in a, this. a really nice house or conference room. And almost get the deal done. Mm-hmm. They, That's our oh, succession recap. They wear a lot of black Tony <laughs> Romo style plain baseball caps. Yeah. In this oh, one. for the for the tenth episode in a row, Shiv thinks that her dad actually takes him takes her seriously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Logan uses the F word. <laughs> oh man! Oh, I, my actually my cool throne is the Washington Bullets because they're in first place. No oh. big deal. Now I don't I don't care about the Washington Bullets overall. First place in the East. If the season ended today, they would be the one seed in the Eastern. Four in a row. They're wow. pretty good. They beat the Bucks. The, ba- the Bulls are two. Yeah, Bulls, Bulls are two. Are, Bulls just wax the fucking Lakers. As a rule, and I, fuck, Caruso, fuck. Caruso got a, a sick fucking video for him. Yeah, fuck speaking of LeBron NFTs. James. Yeah. Yeah, that, the last night was was a, a perfect encapsulation of how LeBron is just an absolute fraud. <laughs> he the the story came out that the Lakers basically like asked Caruso to take less money because they didn't have to pay the luxury tax, which is a crazy ask to ask a player. Cause, no, like, why would you ever do that when you're just trying to make as much money as you can? You don't give a fuck about the team being in salary cap problems. But LeBron is the GM. Everyone knows this. It's true. He could easily have been like, "We need Caruso. We need Caruso. We need Caruso." Didn't, and then it's all over him, like hugging him, social media, like "Love you, bro. Love you, bro." Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Maybe bad team. Maybe he's just happy that Caruso's getting paid more money. I Bulls guess are, the Bulls are good. Caruso, that, I love Caruso. Say what you want about Lakers. Lonzo might not. Ball. I'm a big Lakers. baller. I'm unironically become a huge big baller. I've, I've been, I've been on the ball train since the beginning. That's actually, but I never Kuzma. thought I would be a huge Lonzo ball fan. I followed Kuzma closely because he was best friends with Lonzo when they were rookies, and he was like funny. Like he's a very, he's, he's fun to root for. He's kind of a clown, but he's like, he's got that. Uh, a rational confidence you need if you're going to be yep. a superstar and yep. he's kind of playing like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. You need the confidence. Confidence comes first. He's got yeah. the skill comes yeah. second. Yes. If the playoffs started today, Bull, uh, Wizards one seed, Bulls two seed. Wow. Celtics. Who yeah. would have thought Celtics would be the out, out of the playoffs? Shit. No, they play no, the no, playing game. game. Yeah, the nine Stupid, seed, right? Uh, nine seed they right play now. the 10th. They would play, they play the 10th the, seed. They're the nine. <laughs> and then they would play the eighth seed. 
Okay. God damn that it. That sounds that fun. That shit makes me so mad. Yeah, but the bullets. Just let everyone in the play. You know, I, I've said that I don't care about the bullets, but um, I reserve all rights to become a massive hypocrite in case they finish in the top four. I care very much about the Bulls. It's very fun to watch them, although West Coast basketball I can't stay up for. I just can't. I watched the first quarter last night and then went to sleep. Uh, speaking of, I'll do my cool throne first. Uh, the Bucks, who are outside of the playoffs right now, and... Uh, the real cool throne is the rest of the league because Giannis is already planting the seeds to maybe leave Milwaukee. What do you do? He said in his a GQ article, he said, one challenge was to bring a championship here, and we did. It was very hard, but we did. Very, very hard. I just love challenges. What's the next challenge? The next challenge might not be here. It's, <laughs> me and my family chose to stay in the city that we all love and is taking care of us for now. In two years, that might change. I'm being totally honest with you. I mean, winning a championship for the Milwaukee Bucks is a pretty fucking Counts big two challenge. Yeah, two I don't know. If, if he could win a championship, an NBA championship for the New Zealand Breakers, mm. that would be much more difficult. I just, uh, this is a cool throne for everyone who uh, is a fan of off-season NBA more than regular season NBA. Mm -hmm. So you got, you got your wish. Giannis might become a free agent. I mean, or demand a trade. Where else would he go that would be more of a challenge than Milwaukee? L.A., trying to play with LeBron. Yeah, trying to coexist. Yeah, with simply. LeBron and that shining star that's always on him because it has to be on him. All right, my hot seat is Duke. Duke. In institutional chaos, Duke. If you missed the report, uh, Coach K's grandson, who's on the team, nepotism much, uh, and their best player. Would you say it's their best player? Yes, Paolo Bencaro. Their best player got DWIs. Uh... Well, I don't even know when it was. Last night, night before? I think uh, it was Sunday morning, so Saturday night. And Coach I, K kept the lid on this. Yep. For, he was he was putting pressure on the police department, sounds like, for the last couple days. Coach K should retire right now. If he had any backbone and stood for anything that he says that he stands for, you can't have this. Or at the very least, remove the letters D, U, and I from his grandson's Duke University mm -hmm. sweatshirt. Yes. Uh, we're moving bias for a second here, Big Cat, because I just want to, you know, since yeah. this is this situation will apply to okay. any person who gets in any type of driving Correct. trouble going yep. forward, yep. would you not say that this is a, a possible coaching moment that he could use to help these players grow as yeah, humans? No, I do think it's a coaching moment. He should say, "Guys, I've failed you. I'm retiring right now." Got that it. would be a great coach. So that's moment. what all coaches should I do. Also, Anytime one of their players gets in trouble driving well, especially or off the, the court, they're they under twenty one. Retire. College kids should go to college to do college, not to drink. They're under 21, driving a vehicle. Disgusting. I, I would also take, I told you this before the show, Hank, I would also take Coach K if he doesn't want to go to jail or retire, if he wanted to give his grandson to Pete Gaudette like he did all those losses in 1995. I would take that as well. If he literally changed well, legally, he, Pete Gaudette became uh, his grandson's, the, the DUI grandson's, Grandfather. I was going to say, like, DWI. D, I thought it was DUI. It's DWI. What's the difference? No idea. Under, while? While. It was point, he was point oh eight, but he's under 21. So, wait, is his grandson, are his minutes per game higher than his blood alcohol? Let's find out. I'd say probably Probably no. not. I, I, all I'm saying, Big Cat, is I think that if, if you call yourself a major college basketball program, you shouldn't have any sort of motor vehicle incidents, and you certainly shouldn't have any nepotism on your team. I agree. And you know what? Let me just say this. Maybe the athletic department will come down on, on this uh, kid. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Who's the assistant athletic department? Also Coach K. Oh, no, Coach K's uh, daughter. Oh, okay. The grandson's mom. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So maybe she'll come down. Do you think she maybe give him a you, spank on the yeah, butt? Dude, that's probably much Here's worse. What I was <laughs> Did he slap the ground before he, he walked on the line? People actually, there was a Duke fan who was like, this is ticky tack. He was .08. <laughs> like, <laughs> so they have Gardner-Webb, Lafayette, and the Citadel. Oh, that's and then great. Gonzaga, Ohio State. Yeah, so yeah, Gonzaga, three suspension. Yeah, three games suspension. I'm per sure it'd be Friday three games. Vegas, if it happens Gonzaga. three games from now, he would be suspended for Gonzaga. Actually, for Gonzaga, we should do a reverse suspension. Everyone knows DWIs equals three it, games. It should be a reverse max. suspension. The grandson should have to play 40 minutes against Gonzaga. That would Set be funny. Follow? Yeah, that would mm -hmm. be funny. Just watch him out there. Both of them. Either way, I'm disgusted. How do you it's get a gross. DWI if you're not driving? Riddle me that. So it's uh, aiding a betting DUI. So if you're a passenger in North Carolina I while think somebody's driving under the influence who is under the age of 21, 
you both get in trouble for it, especially if it's your car. I, I so just if they're driving your car, then it's like you gave them the keys. I just assume they're so young and so drunk that one of them was doing the pedals and one of them do, was doing the wheel. I think it's just good. That's good teamwork. Mm -hmm. They're aiding and abetting each other 24 hours a day, whether it be in a car while it's you're disgusting. hammered it's disgusting. or on the basketball court. Go ahead, Billy. The one time I heard about two people in the same car gang in DWI, they tried to switch seats. Maybe that's what happened. Uh, what, do you think? Do you think the grandson said, well, "Do you know like who my called, grandfather is?" So, I, so like hypothetically, yeah. I mean, I listen. I, you know, you, you should were, never drink and drive him. That's it's bad. He should be punished for it. But I would like to know where this cop went to school. Where did they? Where did they? Where did he get arrested? Durham. Was it in Durham? Oh, UNC yeah. grad. Shout out. You got you. I, oh. you got to ask the question. Mm. I don't know. I, okay. I, for one, respect our police officers, Hank. Yeah. So me too. Uh, I, you should never Coach drink K, and drive. step down right now. Institutional chaos. Before someone gets hurt, really, step down. What a gift that the grandson gave him for his retirement tour. <laughs> Beautiful. Here you go, Pop Pop. What do you think he calls him? Pop Pop? Just calls him <laughs> Coach? He, he calls him Pop Pop he's in the huddle? <laughs> he's definitely been called Coach since he was a baby. Just like, this is my son, Coach. Um, he just uh, always tells everybody what to do. You think Coach K like met with the police officers afterwards? It was like, hey. I just want to say, like, thank you. You did a great job yes. tonight. Leaned in yeah. and then really gave them a piece of his mind. But yes. it was like under the auspice of like, I want to teach you how to be a leader went in, their in this room. community. Yeah. Uh, good for P Banchero that he has uh, Coach K's grandson to lead all the headlines. Like that. that's the one spin zone for him. True. <laughs> we can yeah. all make those jokes. All right. Also, if you're from Italy... You should be allowed to drink under 21 in the United States. Agreed. That's yeah, this actually was... Cultural. This is on Coach K's family. And it's Italian discrimination. Yeah. The most discriminated class in America. The entire Krzyzewski family mm -hmm. should take credit for this. Yes. They're Polish. Nobody discriminates against Polacks. Never. No jokes. Uh, Michael Savarino, he played four minutes against Gardner-Webb. Or Do you have whoever any? he had last. Was that, is that the people we did the... Yeah. The, the Polish jokes? jokes? Yeah. I, would some, make, funny. I would never Screen make funny. Screen door on a, on a uh, sub... Yeah, the, they, the Polish Navy has screen, <laughs> tried to install a screen door on their submarine. They sent a rocket to the moon <laughs> during the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Jake, hot seat, cool throne. My hot seat's the Mets. Ooh. They lost Noah Syndergaard, and the fan base doesn't seem too happy about it. Wait, they lost him? Like they can't find him? <laughs> yeah. Missing. Find okay. my friends isn't working. Yeah. No, he's off to the Angels. So. Oh. Interesting. Jacob DeGrom, of course, coming off the injury. Now Thor is gone, and Mets fans are... I'm sure they'll take this rationally. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my cool throne is Abu Dhabi. They're hosting two NBA preseason games next season. Now, redemption for Fight Island, maybe. Put the court on the beach. Ooh. Mm, they have to also, do it. Jake, pre-notification, uh, because I'll want to bet on that, and it'll probably be at a really random time. Okay. So make sure you mark that. Mid-October, I'll write it down. That, that's definitely going to be like a Tuesday. We're just walking around the office. Like, you you take the Nets or the Knicks. Mm -hmm. I just like how Adam Silver is once again standing up for human rights. Mm -hmm. He's the best commissioner Thank we you. got. Thank you, Adam. Best commissioner we got. All right, Billy. My hot seat is Mac Jones. Uh, Mac Jones has sort of gotten the uh, – some people are calling him the Grayson Allen of the NFL – and to add to sort of his uh, sort Why? Of whole aura. Because he always gets DUIs? Well, because he's a tripper. Um, he didn't. He did and, not. He, anyway, he was a tripper. Um, he was not He was. Fact or fiction. It's now coming it's out that Mac Jones was a <laughs> child actor and child model. And just really sort of making everyone be like, yep, exactly. I saw some of the pictures of Mac Jones. It's, it's he, he doesn't not look like Billy Football as a child. Ah, you there's the one you look like. There's huh? What's like, wrong with being presumably. a child? Yeah, I know. Actor. I'm just saying, people are sort of. He's kind of almost like a, a, Ooh, what a Duke athlete, Grayson <laughs> Allen type that <laughs> may be, you know, sort of taking liberties that he shows. Listen, on the by being field. a child can actor. You, can I give you a piece of advice? Yeah. Real quick. Uh, we. The way that it's going with Mac Jones, right? Like his career arc and how the Patriots look right now, we're going to have more than enough time to hate him. Let's not force it. Okay. Like it's gonna come naturally because he's probably gonna win like five Super Bowls with Bill Belichick. So let's not like the trivial stuff will look foolish when we hate him for winning five Super Bowls. We're like, remember we tried to hate him for being a child actor. Mm -hmm. It's gonna come. Don't worry. Okay. We have more than enough time where Hank is just shoving it down everyone's throat here. Other hot seat, Rex Ryan. Uh, he does not want to be a, a 
associated with Robert Salah, and then Robert Salah said, "You know where to find me if you have an issue with it." <laughs> Which he okay. wasn't, yeah, and then okay. he became. Thank yeah. you, Rex. So I wasn't going to associate him I, at all. The, the did, did he say something? Talk about, about like, irrational confidence, that guy. Yeah, Rex, uh, Hank, the man has the highest score ever in terms of problem solving and logic in the state of Maryland. Uh, Stuart Finer, our good friend Stu Finer, put it best. Shut up. Fucking fat slob, suck my wife's fucking There it is. That's his message to Rex Ryan. I just think of every time that Rex Ryan comes up. But yeah, Rex Ryan basically made... No one was talking about him, then everyone was talking about him because he was talking about it being like, don't talk about me. Okay, I won't. I'll stop, Rex. <laughs> By the way, where do you go to get tested for that if you're just in Maryland? Do they have... Is there like a building that adults can go to? It was... And be like, hey, I want to I get tested for my logic and problem solving. Buddy Ryan definitely did that as like a dig on Rob. He was like, Rob was acting out. And so he was like, Rex, here, fill out your name. Boom. You're the best. Yeah, just... He took him to a nondescript <laughs> building, handed them a piece of paper he printed up himself. Yes. It was like, wow, Rex, you're really smart. Yeah, Rob, your logic is incredible. Rob, you piece of shit. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, and your cool throne? Uh... Jimbo Fisher's time in Texas A&M, he said, we're going to recruit an unbelievable class this year, so I'm the dumbest human being on God's earth to recruit all these guys to A&M so I can go across over there and go play against them. Okay. So, not leaving for LSU. All right, so, or, maybe not leaving for LSU, or put it through the college football translator, put it through the little thing, he's saying, LSU, you got to pay me a lot more than that. Hmm. That's what he's saying. He's also he's saying, saying, oh, LSU, your first offer was $12 million. How about 15? He's also saying to every single kid that he's recruiting right now, yeah. you guys are awesome players. I love you very much. Look how much I'm talking about you right now and how great you are. I'm not are. going anywhere. I'm, I'm not going anywhere whatsoever. Trust me, I'm staying here. That's, or That's a it, nice hedge by him. In the event that I do go, just letting you know, I still think that you're great. You can just transfer. Come to LSU. Yeah. Yes, because I have all this much more money now. Yep. Um, all right, let's get to our interviews. We got Brian Baumgartner. Did they say it right at that time? Baumgartner. You'll find out. Okay, we'll find out. And Kevin from the office. And then Kenny Pickett. Before we do that, BetterHelp. Go to BetterHelp.com slash PMT for 10% off your first month. The best way to think about therapy is through a bunch of analogies like, hey, you get your car tuned up to prevent bigger issues down the road. You get your annual checkups and you go to the gym to maintain physical wellness and prevent injury and disease. Well, how about you do that with your mental health? you got to go to therapy so that you can have routine maintenance on your mental and emotional health, wellness to prevent bigger issues down the road. Therapy doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It means you're investing in yourself to keep your mind healthy, and Barstool Sports agrees. They're offering better help services to their employees as an added benefit to help take care of their overall well-being. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Why invest in everything else and not your mind? you got to invest in your mind. The podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp, and our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash PMT. It's okay to not be okay. Go to BetterHelp.com dot com slash pmt b-e-t-t-e-r-h-e-l-p dot com slash pmt okay we now welcome on uh recurring guest recurring in person it's brian baumgartner he's got a new book out it's called welcome to dunder mifflin the ultimate oral history of the office yes we were mid conversation so let's just pick it up you were no noticing how this beautiful studio. this studio is. yes no for anyone who sees pictures or or watches this place it is it is as disappointing as mm -hmm. you would expect it to mm -hmm. be. Well, really, it's a very it's a very clean studio. Just clean? About, yeah, no, like twenty hours a day, it's clean. And then before we have a guest, we have Billy just come in here and fuck everything up. Oh, okay. So it looks messy. It's he, like a bit that we do. We I actually see. are very tidy people. We've learned through the years that if we try to clean ourselves up, then people will start taking us seriously, <laughs> and yeah. that's a disaster. No, that yeah, that's not that's not your brand. Yeah, because if mm. you walked in, I'm, I mean, you are you doing the rounds today? Have you gone? Like, oh, I'm doing the rounds. Did you do Good Morning America? Today show. Today show. Yeah. Okay. Are those interchangeable? Yeah, we, they are. Okay. Because I always them. ask. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. always get it wrong. I'm like, oh, for my life, asking a guest. I, if they've done I it. typically am. But today I'm aware. Okay. So the Today Show, you did it. It's beautiful. It looks nice. It's clean. Yeah. And then you come in here 
and we get you to bring down your you know feelers like these guys are just are we even taping anything it's relaxed yeah this is relaxed though i appreciate that so just like a couple guys talking here what's the biggest sex scandal in the history of the office Mm -hmm. like you know we're not yeah like you we're not even taping yeah this is just basically just you could locker room there's a on 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 camera or off camera I want of both. Ooh. Oh. Well, no, the on camera. That's, <laughs> that's no, that's right? That's white, yeah. There was a cuckold, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Andy was the cuckolded. Yeah. Cuckolder? He got he got cucked. He got cucky. Yeah, he got cucked. Yeah, he did, for sure. Yeah. Uh, that would be, yeah, that would be it. Who do you hate the most? On the show? Yeah. Off camera. Off camera? Again, Who do I hate the most? Just, oh, we're just, did it today just show, chatting. and this is just, yeah. I mean, there's dip spit, there's... Probably coffee cups, like probably you say it. Yeah, probably Corel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. a diva. Just he's no. Did anyone become Was a it, diva? No, that's the crazy thing. And I think actually, I don't know. Is this like bar stool or something? I don't know. We were just a bunch of idiots, mm-hmm. like unknown on this show. They're looking for unknown people, right? And so we get on, and and even people forget, like Corel. The little movie, Forty Year Old Virgin, that wasn't until season two. So right. there was like nobody was known. No one had that attitude, and I think it was all of us kind of like coming up together. Yeah, that no, it would be like your brother or something. Be like, what? Well, shut up! It, You're not gonna act like that. Yeah, the, the there fact was none that of that. You guys all became more famous together. But what about at the end? Was the end? I've always wondered this about The Office because one of my favorite shows of all time, and most. Hardcore fans would say, oh, the end, you know, when Steve Carell leaves, I think actually there's some very funny moments when he left, after he left. But w- the ending of it, was it, it's time to go, this is good? Or were there a lot of people who were like, why can't we just keep going? Um, it, it really, honestly, it really was like, it's time to be done. And here's why. There's actually a very specific reason. Because there was conversation, we talk about this in the book, Welcome to Dunder Mifflin, available yes, at bookstores now. today. Um no, that that it could have like I called it ER. We could have ER'd it. Yes, right. Like Clooney leaves, you bring in whoever came onto ER. I don't know, but like it went twenty years. ER did, so it could have done that. Like you know, John Krasinski could have gone and you know become Jack Ryan or whatever, and and different people could have left. Some could have stayed, but uh, Greg Daniels had an idea of the of the end of the show from the very beginning which was the documentary has to air right, right. so this thing that they've been shooting we've been shooting for 9 years right. has to eventually air and once it airs it's almost like a commentary on reality television actually right because once you see yourself on television everything changes mm-hmm. so the show couldn't really exist in the same form once everybody would have to be aware of how they were perceived, which we explore a little bit at the end of the show. So the idea, just to wrap up that point, was basically we want as many of the original people to be, like Mindy Kaling had gone to do the the Mindy Project and, and, uh, and, and Steve had left, but most of the original people were there. And so to tell that story, those people had to be there to sort of see the ramifications of their idiocy over mm-hmm. the years to maybe mm-hmm. watch some of them if it had been extended some of them probably would have become more diva like yeah than they even were because they're like you said they're seeing themselves on tv that's right you don't act the same in front of a camera after you're already watching yourself on tv right unless you work before. for barstool yes and then you all just act like the idiots you well, are again none yeah. of these are on yeah right yeah. now so right. Just, oh. never just exists anything. yeah okay. like <laughs> dave built this office just as a shrine to him no actual content is going out oh of there okay i thought i'd seen some stuff but maybe not right. it would be funny if you did a, another season where it was post everyone realizing that they're stars kind of like a real housewives when everyone just season two everyone gets divorced right and they have this fa- this little bit of you know famous and they cl- latch onto it right that would actually be a very funny spin-off show of everyone being like yeah <laughs> yeah now so, I'm a bit, yeah. yeah kevin malone nfts and try- that's, that's right <laughs> yeah. yeah so there's i don't i can't remember if we've ever talked about this before but um i try to avoid reddit at all costs Smart. and going down the the reddit the reddit uh the dark hole of reddit but there is apparently the, and i've seen the the chains um, that Kevin Malone is a secret genius. Have you heard this before? Yes. So yeah. yes, yes. So the basis for the and this gets into your point slightly, but 
the basis of this and people pull evidence like minute little glances to camera from early on and like he's a gambler and how does he and then he gets fired and suddenly he owns a bar yeah so that is an unaired storyline how he has the bar i'm gonna fill you in on this it's gonna blow your mind okay, okay ready so the idea is that once the documentary airs kevin malone becomes the fan favorite of people watching i have in my office at home like my face as a cartoon and like kevin rocks and all this stuff right so there became this movement of kevin malone being a fan favorite and partly based on my own experience in the world i can't go into a bar and not be offered a drink uh -huh. from Malta. I, they want to have a drink with kevin malone so the storyline is shot but not aired that uh Kevin Malone goes into bars. Everybody wants to buy him a drink. There's a particular bar in Scranton, Pennsylvania that he goes in all the time. And he has accumulated such a credit at that bar <laughs> from people buying him drinks <laughs> that he uses that as leverage to own the bar. Oh, I love that is a true written story that was shot. And the, the finale was like an hour and 45 minutes already. And they're like, all right, we have to cut that. That's it still incredible. Makes sense, but that's it. I really was wondering, like, how how did you end up owning that bar? You own Poor Richard's, the place, the watering hole everybody used to go. And I do kind of subscribe to the Kevin Malone is, I don't I don't think a secret genius. I think he is a genius. Well, I, the think, game, yeah. I think he's a savant because, yes, he was a terrible accountant. But he was also a great gambler at times when it came to like doing certain right. percentages with cards. You right. can't be dumb and be a great poker player. So was it just that, in your mind, Kevin Malone was that unengaged at work that he just didn't give a shit? In part, but also like there's a there's a there's the the whole phrase is idiot savant, right? So like here's the great here's the greatest. I didn't hear I didn't hear about this for years, right? I think the idea of this with Kevin started the basketball episode. I played basketball. Those were that was not edited. That was real live. That was actually one take two of me making I don't know 13, 15 <laughs> feet uh, footers, three free throw line extended. But so that there were like weird skills that he had. Yeah, he had the poker series bracelet. So here's the greatest insider writers joke of all time. They chose the writers didn't even tell me. They chose Scrantonicity, a police cover band, to be his band. And specifically chose him to be the lead singer and drummer yep. of this band. I I didn't know this. I'm not that. I am not a musical genius. But apparently, in the police, the there's the beat, but the singing occurs off of the beat from where the normal drum beat is. So you would have to be a musical savant to be able to play drums and sing at, at the same, same time. time. Yeah, because yes. singing, the vocals were based around Sting, who was playing the bass. That's, That's incredible. So it would be around, it would be something that he could sing easily, not what's his name, Copeland was playing on the drums. I had never thought about that. But well, it so you I understand it. it. I love it. I didn't even know... But yes, yeah, so he was he was also a musical savant. Okay. That's incredible. I mean, that's just a testament too to people, you know, being diehard fans of the show and loving the show so much that they then watch it again and watch it again until they find out some storyline that maybe is real. Right. That you're saying might be real. Right. But I they actually, perceive it. I think it's great that they've got. It's kind of it, it goes to show you what a well crafted show it was overall. That the writers were having so much fun that they were thinking about these little extra jokes that they could put in there. Oh yeah. It really adds to the fullness of the show and makes everything else like it, there's an entire world that they created. Yeah. For themselves. So the book. Uh, yes. How how long did it take you to write this book? <sighs> I don't know. Should I say like ten years? Yeah, say no. ten years. Yeah, ten years. Um, no, I mean it's been it's been essentially two years since the beginning to today. I don't know when people are hearing this, but today, 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 no, tomorrow, tomorrow, today, yesterday, whatever. It's it's freaking out. Um, <laughs> I uh, actually just found out I signed like seven thousand books. We just sold out today of the same. Oh wow! Congratulations. Books. Yes. Okay. You should say that Breaking you wrote news. it like during the pandemic, like how we got uh, King Lear, yeah, from Shakespeare it's a pandemic during book. the Black Plague. <laughs> yeah. Now we got that's... Welcome to Dun <laughs> Dunder Mifflin. Yeah, that's right. Um, honestly, this was, um, you know, well, the show was big when it was on, right? And there's fans who watched it. It was it was a rabid 
kind of cult following though, right? Like it wasn't like Friends when it was out in terms of just like mass media production, whatever. Um, and then the numbers started coming out about the streaming stuff. And I started walking into restaurants again and airports and going like, this feels different than it ever has. And the basic gist is, so this was two years ago, so seven years since we have filmed anything. It's the most watched show on television, right? Damn. I was just heard the other day, people talk about Squid Game, Succession, all more people are watching The Office now. Now it's been eight years since we filmed anything than anything else on television. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was like, why? What the I, fuck happened? Like, I, how is it? Like, what? What happened? Like, how is this possible? It's. I'll tell you how. It's tremendously rewatchable. Like, it yes. is. I I watched it when the pandemic happened. I watched it again, full right. start to finish, and right. I still will pop. Like, it is the perfect show that. And I think a lot of TV watchers fall into this trap now, where you have anxiety of what am I going to watch? What am I going to watch? Like, what do I want to? invest two hours of my night into and the office is like well let's put on the office and we'll figure out after one episode and then it becomes like 10 episodes you're watching the office right that's just what you're watching right well let me ask you a question do you think does the office bring you comfort yes yeah, definitely except for the volume of the intro song which I, I think I talked yeah. to you about that last yeah. time. Did yeah. you get to chat with anybody I haven't over at talked. Netflix? No, I Somewhere haven't. like three bars? <laughs> it's so loud. The, the rest of it's great, though. Yeah, it, do, it does. It's um, like Big Cat said. It reduces anxiety watching it. It, yeah. it, it also, I think it brings comfort. Um, now, I, a little less now because this job at Barstool is, you know, for the most part a joke. We have a lot of fun all the time. But I think a lot of people, I remember when I first watched it, I was in college still. And I remember being like, I wish I could just find a job where it seems like people have fun. You know right. what I mean? And obviously, you guys, you know, it's a TV show. But I think there is that comfort to it, too. Like, right. the, like ma making corporate America or the job that you might not love, trivializing it and being like, look, you can have fun. Yeah. So I think that's probably where the comfort, some of the comfort comes from. I think so, too. And, you know, not to go too, too deep, but I think that there's also, like... There's like the surface thing, right? Which is like Michael Scott says horribly inappropriate things. There can be some snideness. There, it's kind of subversive in a way, which I think is why partially it appeals to younger people, that sort of subversive thing. Um, but I think also, and this is part of reading the book and talking to, we talked talk to 44 people and recorded over 100 hours of, wow. of interviews with people about this. But one of the things I think is that in the end, it's it's kind of about love and creating a family, right? Yes. And whether it's the barstool family or the what wherever it is, and that search for people when they're going through a hard and this I asked you that question because this is what when I'm out and about and people will not just come up to me to like say it randomly, but they have this like intense need to tell me about a really bad time in their life that they watched the show and it made them feel better. Yeah. And I think in the end, that feeling of, of love, I don't know if love is the right word, but like kindness, it, family it's building. community, togetherness, and like it being in an office together and like caring about your coworkers, right. absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It didn't matter which character it was, but there would always be a time when when somebody would have something serious going on in their life, and there would be jokes all around, written around the episode. But like in in the storyline for Kevin, when he was worried about the skin cancer and he was right. waiting to get the call back, there's ridiculous stuff going. You're like at the ice skating rink, Michael Scott's just like you know flying around out there, right, acting like a fool. But then you see, there's always like a few shots of of everybody rallying around that person making sure they're okay it happened with every character even the characters that were probably the least likable to their co-workers like dwight right there were times when people like lined up behind him right like tam and dwight that relationship between the two of them weirdly that they bonded yeah no totally i think it's a lot about just understanding that even if you're in a very boring job where your job is to literally sell paper and count paper right. the most boring thing that you can possibly sell probably there's still like there's a reason why it can you can still have moments of joy and you can yeah. find family and relationships inside that office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. everyone goes through that. that yes, yeah. absolutely. So, uh, in the book, you talk about how I every morning you guys had to method act your job. Yeah. So this is we actually, and it was one of those things where uh, someone when I started talking to people, someone reminded me, and I was like, oh yeah, because it had been a really long time. But this is like think about 
you know, network monolith corporation money bottom line. So the first season, right? Um, we would all show up. So having to show up to work earlier than we would ever be used on camera, everybody get ready. And then at say 7 a.m. generally, we would go into the office and the cameras would just walk around for 30 minutes and film us. And you just were like just fake like we were work? working. Fake work, fake phone calls, <laughs> going to the copier, doing copies. Like a lot of the a lot of the images actually in the credits. So like Kevin on the adding machine and Dwight with the shredder and like the copier going and stuff like that were kind of pulled and used. But like very, very not 30 minutes a day. And I had this conversation with Ken Quapis, who directed the pilot, and he said, Look, so many pilots first shows everybody's trying to get to know each other. We're trying to introduce this whole story and everything's happening and it feels new. And he was like, this has to feel like everyone has been working here for decades yeah, or at least a decade yeah. or whatever, that this is where you, that your chair has your body imprint in it already. Right. There's yeah. no, where is the phone? There's no newness. And so that like, we would just work truly like fake sales Genius. calls, passing notes, passing papers, walking through, and I think just that time and all of us, not just for that, but all the other time. I mean, this is a hugely unique thing, right? Which was there were, I'm not going to count right now, and we know I can't, 12 actors that were in the main bullpen of the office in there all the time. There's no fake walls. Right. They would shut the doors. There'd be two camera guys, one sound guy, and all of us in the room. So like in terms of imp you know, improving off of each other, working off each other, learning from each other, different skill sets. Oh, if I say this to him, this is a layup. Like all of that stuff happened because we were just together right. all the time. That's awesome. I also have to wonder how that would have gone if, if you had all been established actors at the start of the show and the director's like, hey, can you come in an extra, you know, two, three hours early and just hang out and pretend that you're in an office for a while? I wonder the fact that you guys were all kind of new and starting something together if you were like more receptive to doing that probably yeah i mean probably because everybody was on board there was no like i don't i truly don't remember any questioning or like like oh you know or or anybody saying like i don't want to do that or nothing nothing yeah. like that yeah did uh did ricky gervais ever show up after you know i know he's executive producer in certain times was he actually involved in the creation of any storylines or anything like that so he i mean made he made an appearance on the show as an actor. He would show up occasionally. He and Ricky uh, wrote an episode. This is like scratching the cobwebs of my brain. I think it was the convict um, episode, which is shortly after the, uh, you know, Andy Bernard, and they came over and we were there eliminating actors one by one once yes. the branches merged. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they were around some. Uh, uh, Stephen Merchant ended up directing one or two as well uh, but but largely no and they actually um for the book i i interviewed Stephen merchant and he talked about he thought because what was happening at this period of time is that british shows that were brought over were all failing right they were all all failing and steven said he thought the smartest thing that he and ricky did was leave it alone like we shouldn't pretend to know the cultural references that are funny or whatever uh, in the United States. Like, let's let them do it. And they feel like them staying out of it actually um, helped. Yeah. Make it m more purely American. Yeah. yeah. I believe that. Um, all right. So I know you got to do a couple other. Is this a interviews. gimp back here in the closet? Like, what, what is the. Do you hear that oh, banging? Oh, no, yeah. That's we, the pipes. Yeah, yeah. There's air in the pipes. Oh, okay. And it's just sad to. Again, you're, you know, we, built we haven't even turned on the cameras on yet. The pipes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. All right, so my last question, you go to Roback, R-H-O-B-A-C-K, use code PFT for 20% off your first purchase, performance uh, Q-zips, uh, polos, everything at Roback.com, best stuff out there. Uh, do you think Aaron Rodgers should be in jail or prison for holding a super spreader event every Sunday uh, and willfully lying to the public about his vaccination status? Thoughts. And um, should he have to, have to strip his Super Bowl away? Oh, strip his Super Bowl yeah, away yeah. from 2010? Yes. 11? Yes. Um, 
Yeah, probably. Okay, good. All right, so we're on the same yeah. page. Would good. you like, yeah, a, a, as a Packers, are you an owner as well or just a fan? I am just a fan. You can buy some we stock can, today. today. Uh, is it today? You yeah, want me to buy today. you a share? Yes, buy me a share right now. Yeah. I'll right buy, now, I'll right buy, now. I'll buy you a share if you disavow the Packers for cutting Blake Bortles. No. Why did you do that to Blake? He's our friend. I like Blake. Yeah, did I you, know Blake. I like Blake. Well, you, no, you don't. Yeah, I do. Well, then you would stop rooting for the Packers. Listen to me. I, oh, I'm worried. I as a, worried about what? So Aaron Rodgers just tortured me. Yeah, no, I know. And I'm worried. They're great, by the way. The Bears. <sighs> They're so good. They're so fun to watch. Listen, Justin. They're so fun Justin to watch. Justin Fields too. versus Jordan Love for the next 20 years. Sign me up for that. <laughs> uh, I'm worried. I think the Packers are actually going to win the Super Bowl this year. I do too. I do yeah, too. You it's heard actually it here a first. Lock. It's a lock. No, now you're trying to jinx. No, I'm I saw, not. No, I saw no, it in your eyes. I'm a great eye. gambler. No, Everyone knows my eyes. locks never lose. I'm one and zero in game of the years this year. That's not that good. One and zero. You can't be better than one and zero. Game of the year. How many five and zero is significantly better than one. How can you have five game of the years? Oh, I'm good one and zero. And my everybody has a game of the year. Does every everyone other week. win their game of the year? No, I'm saying every other week. What was your game of the year? It was uh, Pitt versus UNC last Thursday night. No big deal. Easy winner. Took overtime and also like a monsoon to show up at the perfect time for it to win. <laughs> but yes. Okay. So uh, I win all my locks. The Packers are a lock to win the Super Bowl. I really like the way that they – I mean, I I believe you discount the game that Aaron missed, which I know you can't do, but if you, if you set that aside mm -hmm. and you acknowledge as I think – now it's hard not to that the first game of the year was an aberration right so you're setting aside the chiefs game you're setting aside the fact that aaron Rodgers didn't get vaccinated and lied to everyone you're setting those things aside yeah and i'm saying <laughs> that they have looked the best team in the nfl this year i'd agree their defense is I'd just what, what sets them apart from old packers teams like yeah. the defense is super bowl level at this point i saw a stat. and I, I i would buy you a share of the stock unfortunately it says that it's non-transferable so if i buy it I can't then give it you to you. You can't give it to me? I can't yeah. give it to you. Once you're in, you blood in, fined. blood out. You can't put it in my name? Nope. Nope. You're lying. Maybe there's a curse they on just the Packers now. What else? Any other NFL thoughts? Actually, that would be I mean, a great story. Good. I became an owner, and they won the Super Bowl. That's a good story. For who? <laughs> for, you. for me. For you personally. It's a great yeah. story for yes. you. Yeah, it's a great story <laughs> yes. for me. I yeah. Okay, all right, let's do story time. You become an owner, Aaron Rodgers gets hit by a bus. That's a great story for me, personally. <laughs> it's really... Now you're pushing it. Well, I mean, I, I, mean, I went with you I, You didn't first. know my injuries. I didn't, with I didn't you. tell you the injuries yet. Oh, what were your injuries? He can never walk again. <laughs> 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 oh, I you know I think the Packers are very very good this year. I saw a stat that was like the last time, the only times they've ever been top three in defense, and it was a list of all the times they've won the Super Bowl. And they've won more three than three. No, yeah, no, I'm saying top three in defense in that year. Right, 2010, 96, and then it was whenever you know when. I mean, those are fake Super Bowls anyway, one and two or whatever. Okay, those yeah. don't actually count. No, they don't count. Yeah, um, but except yeah, they're very very good. They do. Are yeah. you, you? I'm assume you're enjoying every moment of this season i i really 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 am and in fact i posted and the director was there i had a, a movie i had a, a, a festival movie thing come out and i went to the this was the arizona game i went oh i went to the red carpet and i took pictures and i said hello to everyone and then the screening happened and i went Boop, and walked back out <laughs> went to the bar that was next door i appreciate that watch the game and then the game was over, and I went in and did a Q and A. Afterward. I appreciate that so much. I feel like a lot of actors uh, kind of lose, like they're you know they're fans, but it's like not. I want to watch every game, fans. Right. And I love that you're an every game fan. Then that was a big game. Yeah. And I and that was I mean Devonte out. Uh, that was uh, yeah. It was an impressive, crazy win. It was a great win. It was an impressive win. A great Insane. win. And um, are you going to go to the Super Bowl? In Los Angeles, yeah, if the yeah. Packers are in it, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, uh, that that's an easy we'll answer. See you there. Yeah, yeah, we'll see you there. If they, if not, then I don't know. Then it no, I mean, they'll depends win. on they, what they, they, Aaron Rodgers doesn't lose NFC Championship games. Shut up. <laughs> it's all I have. <laughs> it's, all, it's all I have. It's all I have. Um, oh, the Bears are so good this year. <sighs> 
they're getting better. Okay, are they? They're no, in the hunt. I, no, I, are, I told, are they getting Justin better? Justin Fields is getting better. <laughs> That's all that I've, I'm compartmentalizing the entire season. It's See, I went I'm to jaded the against and, him. By the way, why? I'm jaded against him. Why? He doesn't know this, and not really. I'm fake jaded. Um, I, you, you, I grew up in Atlanta. Okay, so I'm a so, yeah, University he's a, of Georgia a dog. Fan. Yeah, former dog. Yeah. He couldn't wait his turn. Oh, so you're going to win the national championship and the Super Bowl this year? Sick him. Look at woof, that. Woof, Whoa. Woof. And Georgia's world, very good. And the World Series. Yeah, but I, I can't take credit for that. And yeah. I've had people now to very say, humble, well, you can take cre- credit for that. No, because I – no, I just – no, I mean, like, I can't enjoy it because uh, I'm a huge baseball fan. Yeah. Huge. And I get I get shit – I don't – well, I'll ask you your opinion about this. A huge baseball fan – I did theater for years and years, traveled around TBS. The Braves were on yep. TBS. I'm a Braves fan. I'm from it. I mean, I was a yeah, hardcore yeah. Braves fan. Then I moved to Southern California and said, I'm not leaving mm-hmm. Southern California. And I and at that point, this was like in between TBS and when you could watch every game on the planet, now on the MLB thing. I couldn't watch. I couldn't watch the game. I'm like, what? Am I gonna go back? My parents moved away from Atlanta. My sister moves away. I'm like, I can't. I'm like, what am I gonna do? And I love baseball. First thing I did is I got tickets at Chavez Ravine, and I became a Dodgers fan. I just was like, I want to go, and I'm going to invest in the team. You're I'm going to root head. for the team. Yeah. Well, I'm a what? Seam head. head. It's what? an expression love for baseball. a giant baseball fan. Oh, yes. Yeah. But I'm a Dodgers guy now. I mean, so, like, you, yeah, you I, can't take credit. That's fair. Yeah, so I, I can't take fair. credit for the Braves. Yeah. But you are going to win. credit. That You're going to win. The, the, bull, the Bulldogs are going to win, and the Packers are going to win. You also so. don't – you get to wear the same G on everything you – uh, isn't that work out? Yeah, well? our, our nice. producer Bubba, who is colorblind, wouldn't know which team, which day of the you week it was. You don't know which was. one this is. You wouldn't know which day of the week it was, depending <laughs> on what hat you're wearing. It's gray. They're always gray. <laughs> it's all gray. <laughs> um, all right. Well, Brian, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Everyone, go by. Welcome to Dunder Mifflin, the ultimate oral history of the office. We love the show. This is like uh, the perfect holiday present. It is. Do you guys plan that? that? It is. That. At, no, in tr- well, two things. One, I'll tell you this because I think this is what is cool about actual books. Because people are like books, but <laughs> yeah, um, no, that's what we said. We yep. went through. Uh, I went through thousands and thousands of pictures that were like in the basement collecting oh, dust. Picture at, book, and so there are there are over a hundred pictures in the book that have never been seen anywhere before. You should have said that from the start. Yeah, just be like, it's hey a picture guys, book. Pictures. There's a color. It's a picture page. book, hey guys. You like um, pictures? It also has. I'll say this right now. Uh, very big text. The pages you can read a lot of pages quickly. I'm just gonna say right now that is the perfect bathroom book. Mm-hmm. Bathroom book. Boom. That this book was meant to be read in the bathroom. I love it. Yeah, thank you. That's I, a compliment. I, yes, th- thank you. That I, actually it's is the, the only, highest. It's of the only place that I read. Yes. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's the highest of compliments. Yeah. Yes. There it is. Um, go buy it, though. Thank you. You're always welcome back. I, I Thank you. It's nice to be in here. Now I'll I'll have better expectations next time about what my surroundings will be. Yeah, I think, actually, we'll- the nice part about doing this car wash here is the studios get cleaner and cleaner as you go. So this is the worst it's going to get. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you're just going to keep going up from here. There is, by the way, guys, just to be clear, can we zoom in on that? There is a stack of laundry. Yeah, oh yeah. Just dirty clothes. <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> This dirty. is the thing. Well, you caught us in an office. I just want to say this. Groceries. This is what I'm... When I talk about the studio, it doesn't have to be fancy. I'm looking at... There's just dust bunnies <laughs> everywhere. I mean, just everywhere. Sounds like you're judging. There's dirty clothes. Sounds like you're judging. There is a stack of cables unplugged into anything. Mm-hmm. So Those are very important. You never know. You there never you know. And these smell clean. Yep, ish. They look smoke. clean. That one smelled clean. Yes. All right. I All need. Right. I need to get some barstool gear before I leave. Yes, we got you. Thank you All so right. much. Thanks, guys. Brian Baumgartner was brought to you by our great friends over at ZipRecruiter. If you're a business owner, it can be tough to hire top talent for your team, especially when you're competing with other businesses to find the right people. If you're Michael Scott, you need a Kevin. You need a, an accounting whiz. Where are you going to find a great recruit like that? Well, you're going to use in, you're going to use ZipRecruiter.com. And you're going to go to ZipRecruiter.com slash PMT. You can get a hiring edge there. They have invite to apply at ZipRecruiter. When you post a job on ZipRecruiter, you start getting the most qualified people sent to you pretty quickly. Then you can easily review recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply with one click. Next key marketing manager, Aaron Hartje. 
loves to invite to apply. She said, they get my job posting in front of the right people. I instantly see great candidates and I can invite them to apply to my job. In fact, according to ZipRecruiter internal data, on average for 2020, jobs where employers use ZipRecruiter's invite to apply get two and a half times more candidates, which helps make for a faster hiring process. Take it from Aaron who says, you can basically tell a ZipRecruiter who you need, when you need it, and they deliver. See for yourself, just go to this exclusive web address. It's ZipRecruiter.com slash PMT. ZipRecruiter.com slash PMT. You can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash PMT. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And now, here's Pick Quarterback. Can you pick it? Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. It is starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Panthers, Kenny Pickett, also winner of my game of the year. So thank you. I know you probably can't talk gambling, but did you know that you won my game of the year? Did you know afterwards? Like, I know beating UNC is big, but winning me the game of the year was a lot more important. Oh, yeah. I mean, I knew before the game I had some buddies send me actually that we were the game of the year. Um <laughs> You know, my friends are, are pretty ruthless, so they had to make sure that I knew about that before the game started. Um, and then I saw some of your tweets during the game, and I had to send you one. I was congratulating you on the uh, the game of the year, so it was a win-win all around. Yeah, it was a, a great, great game, great season so far. I was very, very nervous, but um, I think I, – I, are we in the trust tree right now? We're in the trust tree, absolutely. I think the two gloves make me nervous, man. The two gloves make me nervous. Can you talk to us why you're a two-glove quarterback? I, I think that you're a very, very good quarterback, and I've watched a lot of Pitt football this year, and you guys have been playing very well. But And that Clemson game was great. But for some reason, two-glove quarterbacks always make me nervous in big moments. In big moments? Yeah. Where's the Where's the translation in that? I don't know. I think it's like – you just can't feel like what feel happened. Like the ball sticks to the hand. Yeah, something like yeah, you're gonna do like a, a tuck rule almost at the worst right. possible time. I think it. I don't know. I just have a better grip with it. It's been. It was something that I did when I was younger. Got away from it, and it came back in college actually against UNC two years ago. Um, was really I think the second time I did it in college. But after that game, I stuck with it. Um, it's been it's been working ever since, so I'm just gonna ride it out. Okay, all right. So you're if you're comfortable, I'm comfortable. But I just had to get that out there because I don't I don't know what it is. I think the PFT nailed it. It's like at the worst possible time, boom, you try to throw and it just sticks to it. I just always assume that if a quarterback's got a glove on his throwing hand, uh, first of all, I don't know if I've ever seen a quarterback with two gloves win a Super Bowl. Oh, we'll have to do some deep deep numbers on that, but I'm pretty sure it hasn't happened. Yeah. But I just well, always assume that like. Uh, the small touch passes. There's just like that fraction of an inch between your skin and the ball. I like skin on skin. And so I feel like you're losing some of the sensation that you might feel in your fingertip against the skin of the football when you throw it. Right. Right. I mean, that, that all that all definitely adds up and makes sense. I haven't run into that issue yet. Um, but if, if I bump into it, I'll, I'll probably take the gloves off. The other thing is the long hair, which, listen, I, I love it. I, yeah. lo I love long hair. I personally have long hair. I think it's a good look, but it's another thing that we've talked about on the show probably too much is that long hair quarterback Super Bowl is that whole thing. Are you gonna are you gonna continue to grow it out or are you gonna trim it up once you get drafted? So the long hair is good or not good? Uh from a from a visual standpoint it's good. From a me thinking you can win a Super Bowl <laughs> standpoint, not so good. What if, what if we send the trend of it being good? We we could start it here on the show. I I'd, yeah. I'd be down for that. Or cut into a mullet. Have you have you considered the mullet? It's been up for discussion. I don't. I don't. I think there's a lot of people in my family, especially my girlfriend, that would not be a fan of it. Um, but you know, I think you know we could we could definitely talk about that after the season going into uh, next year. Uh, so this year's been great. I I I think it's you're an awesome story because like ha what happens every year in the draft, uh, you get guys who kind of come out of nowhere a little bit later, late bloomers. Has there been a moment uh, in the last year or so? where you're like, oh, I'm actually now going to be a high draft pick. Because I know for the majority of your career in college, it was like, yeah, Kenny Pickett might get drafted, but he's not going to be a first-rounder. Now it looks like you're going to be a first-rounder. Have you had that like light bulb? Oh, fuck, this is this is getting really real. Uh, I'd, I'd say so. I mean, it kind of it, – it's built kind of like week by week. It's just gotten bigger and bigger. Um, and, you know, the, absolutely. I mean, that was the reason I came back. The, the whole goal was, you know, to – to be able to win a championship and, and come back and, and go in that first round. 
Um, I think a lot of guys have that kind of goal when they do this. I don't think I'm the first to obviously, you know, forego the draft and come back. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm excited the way it's going. I just hope we can finish it, finish it the right way. So when you were decide, making the decision to come back, what was what did agents and everyone tell you? Like, what did they say what round you would most likely go in if you went to the draft last year? Yeah, I mean, everything I was hearing from agents, coaches, um, you know, some NFL personnel that, and, you know, ex-players. And, um, you know, I mean, obviously, I mean, I had Peyton Manning as, you know, had gave me some advice and, and he got some information for me. And everything I was hearing was, was four or five, round four or five. And it, um, you know, then maybe come back. Peyton was just like, you know, do you see yourself as that kind of player? And the easy answer was no. Um, and I just wanted to bet on myself and come back for one more. That's awesome. And it's, it's, it's a, it was a great bet because obviously you're having a great season, but I think it's, it's, you see a lot of times guys being like, fuck it. I want to just go to the NFL or I don't really trust that people are analyzing me correctly. I'm going to be a second round guy. And you're like, no, I'm going to bet on myself at college football and see where this takes me. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I think, guys, like, it's such an emotional decision. I think the, the best thing that I did with the decision was kind of take the emotion out of it and look at it as a, as a business standpoint. Like, you know, I'm I'm here, but this – okay, so everyone has me here. I, I got to come back and play at a higher level in order to even be in that discussion where I feel like I should be. Um, so once I kind of sat down and kind of looked at it as like a number standpoint and what makes sense and what's the best for my career, um, you know, and my family, and that was that was kind of an easy decision. So I, I want to go back a little bit to your childhood growing up playing sports because I read that you you started out playing soccer when you were a kid. Um, might be a red flag, some people might say, but <laughs> you had to you had to quit soccer because you were too physical. Is that true? That that, that was true. I had I was in a, it was like an indoor soccer league. Um, we had this like bubble like 10, 15 minutes from my house. It was like a rec league, um, and definitely got you know sat, had to sit out a couple games. Um, the soccer career, career was short lived, so I hope that eliminates the one red flag there. And so, th so then obviously you progress playing football, and you become friends with Peyton Manning. That's pretty cool that you get to be like, yeah, Peyton's just wait, I got to take this. It's Peyton. Uh, did you go to the to the Manning Academy? Did you go to his camps? Yeah, yeah, I went there twice. Uh, so that's kind of how the the relationship started. Um, and I was there this past summer. Um, you know, and I, I kind of I know his dad Archie, and we we text once in a while. He'll send me some stuff, so it's it's a really cool uh, relationship. So I, I bring up his name because our uh, our friend Billy Football here, he just texted the group and said, "Good news, Peyton Manning won a Super Bowl wearing two gloves." Oh, there yeah, in the rain. Was it in the rain or was it? it no, probably not in the rain one. That was the Seattle one. It was he probably the one lost in that one. Yeah, what? But in the against the Panthers. The Panthers. That wasn't the rain though. No, I was. No, there. the rain was obviously against the Bears. But I'm yeah. saying, when did he? He was wearing it because of his neck surgery. The Broncos. Yeah, Broncos, I, he okay. did become a two glove guy. I've. Seen, I mean, Roethlisberger's end. been a two glove guy. Yeah. At times, Brady's been a two glove guy at times. So yeah, we can. I just Kurt was Warner. always Kurt Warner, too, right? Kurt Warner. Yeah, I've yeah. always just okay. been nervous Fair. that the ball is going to get stuck, <laughs> and you're going to be standing there like, "Fuck, the ball's stuck in my hand at the worst possible time." Um, I know exactly do you think God was involved rain. against that in that game against yes, UNC? Because I, mean, I, I do. I was, when I, um, after for my I game threw of the my year. touchdown, and I got off to the sideline. Yes, and I was sitting it, on the bench. I looked at you know the other quarterbacks, and I was just like, "Thank God we had the ball first. Like it, it, it was actually insane. As soon as they got like we finished up, there was you know it was coming down pretty hard, but not nothing like it was when they got the ball. Yeah, um, it was it was ridiculous. The wind shifted. It was, like you couldn't get a read on the wind. It was it was unreal. I I wish I had known God was gonna. It was like a tag team. I tagged God in at the end. Um, I would have made it the game of a life a lifetime if I had known God was gonna get involved. But shout out the big man upstairs for uh, helping me out in overtime. Um. It's got to be so annoying when you throw a pick, right? I mean, we got to at least address it. I, I knew this is what I was waiting for. I knew, I knew the last name was going to come up in this discussion. I, I mean, come on, you. When you guys had, when you had Chris Blewett and Kenny Pickett, your Blewett, your kicker, <laughs> and Kenny Pickett, your quarterback. Like, it's. I think it's lame at this point. But have you gotten to a point where it's like? Maybe I'll just change my name. Maybe I'll be something else. I mean, the good news about the Blewett and my and my last name, we weren't here together. We were, we were kind of – so all Pitt fans had Blewett for four and they had me for four. So I guess <laughs> you know, they were blessed with eight years of unfortunate names at certain positions. But, um, no, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to keep the name um, and hopefully throw as, you know, less – you know, minimum interceptions I possibly can uh, to kind of, you know, limit 
limit the uh the t- i'm sure twitter goes nuts about it too yeah. yeah that probably has an impact like a small impact on your decision making is like my last name is people are going to absolutely roast me if i throw an interception so i better be careful yeah it's definitely something to think about you absolutely. should you should do like one of your big first ad deals that you do when you go to the nfl is like just legally change your name to touchdown kenny touchdown and you can get it you know well i'll sponsor i don't know what we'd sponsor there or just change your middle name. Yeah. To, uh, you'll never. Yeah. Ah, yeah, that's good. Go. That's yeah. a loophole. That's a good loophole. That's really good. Uh, I got a very <laughs> important question to ask you. So you played behind Ben DiNucci, James Madison University legend, when he was at Pittsburgh. How how much did. did you learn from Ben, and have you been in touch with Ben about his burgeoning NFL career? Yeah, I learned a lot from Ben. I had Ben and Max Brown actually. Um, you know, when I was a true freshman, they both were they both were here. Max started. He ended up getting injured. Um, you know, Ben came in and then I came in at the end of the year too. So, um, I, I had two, you know, older guys that were, that were here to kind of learn from. And, um, I took a lot from both of their games and, you know, obviously then Ben went on to, to James Madison. Now he's in the league doing good things. So yeah, he was, he was definitely a great guy to learn from. I feel like quarterbacks that stick around at Pitt, they develop in a different way from quarterbacks that might just play like one or two seasons elsewhere, because in your home stadium, there's just so much weird shit that happens there between the wind the turf by the end of the field would you is it more of an advantage for you like knowing where the wind's coming from in the stadium or which sections of the turf are going to be absolutely chewed up from big ben by the end of september <laughs> i mean i'd say both the, the wind is the wind is tough i mean i would say it's it's tougher for kickers um but i, I would def, definitely the field is i think is an advantage i think teams come in i always watch them in warm-ups kind of like walk every inch of the field um like somehow i think that's they think that's going to help them i mean mm-hmm. it's just gotta know it's just not a great surface and you just gotta play you just have to have to know that when you're making your cuts and everything um but i think it definitely gets gets in their heads when they're walking around pregame uh is dan marino a mentor of yours i wouldn't say mentor i mean we we've talked you know every once in a while um you know coming on visits as a as a high school recruit that's the guy that you chase when you see all the records on the wall and stuff so now that you know i'm starting to see my name next to his um it, it's it's an unbelievable feeling i know he was on the yeah part too right yeah, yeah no he was on part of my take guest. yeah he was uh in the van he loved he had a great time he was a lot of fun. <laughs> I heard, I heard, yeah I had, to, I had to watch that one he yeah yeah, totally yeah. oh he was totally fun. now um this is something i always think about when when i think about college football and handicapping games the the color schemes and the jerseys when did you guys officially make the switch to the blue and the in the yellow scheme you have right now because it's a classic i don't know why Pitt ever went away from it was that just this year that you did it consistently no, no, I agree. So it started in 2019, and we started to wear like throwbacks. Yeah. Um, in 2016, when I was getting recruited, I think the first year they started to mix it in. Um, but I absolutely, I mean, it's kind of like no one has these colors. Yes. So when TV on, you see our, you see these colors like that's Pitt. You know, Pitt's playing. So I think it's something pretty special. It's it's awesome. I don't. I mean, I would imagine you guys play better in the jersey. You've only worn this jersey color this year, right? Yes, and we have like these Steel City uniforms that I'm not a huge fan of. I mean, it looks like Army. It looks like it's just not us. You know, I don't, I don't, I think it was a good idea. Um, you know, everyone's hearts were in the right place, but I think we just stick with these colors. We'll be all right. Yeah, those co- the colors that Pitt has are like some of the best color combinations in all of college football. It drove me insane when, when you'd wear the dark navy and like the gold. I thought that was just yeah. the worst. Mm-hmm. So you're on the right path. Do you, um, do you use the word yins? Yins. I, I, we, we'll like mess around. Guys who aren't from here will mess around and say it. My, my, my roommate's Australian. We'll try and throw it in there a little bit. But I, I have a bunch of Pittsburgh friends, and they, they say it, and it just kind of rolls off the tongue for them regular. Yeah, I feel like while you, if, you're all, if you're playing for Pitt, you're allowed to use the word yins, or you're from the Pittsburgh area. But you can't, like, you can't say it as an outsider. No, and I feel like I can't go back to Jersey and say it. No one would have any idea what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does uh, um does Dave Wanstead ever call you up? No, no, never. I never had a chance to talk to Coach, but um he's actually been like a, a pretty big supporter, um you know on TV on Twitter. So definitely appreciate him. Wait, so from Jersey playing at Pitt, uh, have you changed your allegiance to Sheets? Um, I mean, I'm not a huge. I mean, Wawa Wawa is good. I'm not a. I, I don't have an allegiance to, to either one of them, honestly. Uh, I, I don't spend. I don't really go there. Um, if I want like a nice sandwich at home, like there's delis that are that are just way better. Oh wow! Um, so stick with the local spots. You piss some people off with that. Uh, what's your hand <laughs> size? 
I can't give you a, a legit number. We're gonna, I'll wait till so till, big. Uh, it's so big, can't be measured. I, I'll. We could go with that. <laughs> Are, would you start, say that start it's that narrative? Start yeah. that narrative for me going into the draft day. That'll be great. We don't have the ability to measure his hands. He, they're so big. Would you say they're on the bigger or smaller side? In the middle. Okay, okay, that makes me think small. You know, you can get <laughs> you can get massages. There, there are different exercises you can do to actually make your your hand was it your your hand span longer. Have you done those? Yeah. Thumb, thumb to pinky. No, I've never done. It. I'm sure I will be getting involved with them uh, as soon as the season's over. But I know that's a huge concern for everyone. Um, you know, if the yeah. pass. 45 yards on a rope and I throw 45 yards on a rope it doesn't say like from a small hand like, yeah are you sure yeah the weirdest thing <laughs> it is How we're, but that's just dra draft nerds are the weirdest people in the world it's yeah it's it's so odd the things I get tagged in and then like it says like draft expert and you look it's like 105 followers it's just like, <laughs> what, what, what are we doing like, why, why are you what, like, but yeah it is what it is how uh, how far can you throw a football far uh, probably 65 Okay. okay, that's not bad. What's your projected forty? People think I'm slow, but I think I'm going to be in like the low four sixes, high four fives. Yeah, no, I don't think you're slow. I think you actually have like, it's it's I probably the two gloves is what makes people think you're slowed. If we're actually breaking Are you it call down, it sneaky. You don't say sneaky fast. No, but I'm thinking about it. Like there, I we found out that there are Super Bowl winners who have won, have worn two gloves. I can guarantee you that there's no fast guys that have worn two gloves. Yeah, I don't think I, I'm trying. I'm trying to think See, of some. Yeah, no, it's no. So that's Unless what. Big, but Big Ben did, and that's back when Big Ben had Teddy. I would Teddy's say, not fast. Teddy no, is not, not fast, fast at all. <laughs> Big Ben has functional athleticism. That's what you should like. You're you're almost too fast to have functional athleticism. You have deceptive speed at this point. You're in like the Justin Herbert range. Yeah. I mean, I could. I live with that. I'll take that. If Mike Vick wore two two gloves, though, I'm out of the discussion. That's for sure. Um. Def definitely not in that category. All right, so my last question, uh, which is the most important question, because you're going to get drafted in the first round. Congratulations on that. How much do you want to pay us to be Kenny Pickett defenders? Now, we've done this for other people. We've done it for Josh Allen, Blake Bortles, Baker Mayfield. We have a whole resume, binders full of quarterbacks that we will defend and never bash. Like certain teams that haven't won a game in the NFL this year, notice we have never said a bad word about the quarterback there because he's a good friend and we would never do that. So we can be bought. Just think about how much you want to pay us. All right. Yeah, I'll definitely, I'll definitely uh, think about it. All, all I need is like a part of my take shirt or hat or something. I don't know. If you guys yeah, I think we can make that happen. Want. Okay. Would love, would love uh, some merch, rock some merch. We get definitely get a deal going. Done. Yeah. Okay. Sold. I will. We will. We'll defend you. We will defend you against everyone. I mean, listen. You know. I was going to defend you anyway because you won my game of the year. Um, so I I am forever indebted to you because there's nothing better than winning a game of the year and being like 1-0 and in game of the years. I have, a, I have another question. Yeah. Will there be another game of the year? I heard there's rumors going around that there may be another game of the year. There might be because winning a game of the year is a great thrill because everyone just compliments you about your game of the year. And to go 2-0 and on game of the years would be pretty incredible. First so, time ever, probably. Yeah, there might, there might be. I, you know what? I might wait until you guys see where you guys play a bowl game, maybe ACC championship game. That might be a rollover game of the year, the Kenny Pickett Memorial. Not that you're dead, game of the year. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I'm gonna say, if it's us and we go two, that's great. But if you lose and you pick somebody else, does that makes us look probably like a hundred? better in your eyes yeah sure if i were you big kid i would bet on somebody else for your second game of the year that way he can he can leave college as being the only person that's undefeated in big cat games of the year that's true good point good point yeah a lot of good ideas scouts being will yes. like that scouts yes. will like that a lot yeah do you know who the scouts are in the stands like do you know where they sit and you're like i got to make sure that i look really good when they're watching me <laughs> no i mean they come to practice and uh it's it's funny because like we do like um like center quarterback exchange, we call, and then I'll throw it like 10 yards. And there's like, at the UNC game, there was like 15 or 20 of them standing there. I'm just curious as to how much they can get out of the 10 yard, like warm up toss. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. But, Nothing. Yeah, they're, they're, they're there for a reason. So they're, they're getting some kind of information. Uh, I had one last, last question. So this is more about the, uh, the uh, Manning Academy stuff. Is there something tangible that you've learned that they like fixed in you? Where you go to the camp and then they watch you throw and they, like Peyton Manning gives you a piece of advice and it's like, hey, you're, I've noticed that you do this. 
you should change it, and then you've adopted that? That's a great question. I would say it's never medical stuff. They do a lot. I mean, we, we have a chance to ask them questions for like an hour and we go over like, you know, their off season routine, how they prepare for games. That was kind of the biggest thing that I took from it. My, the first time I went and I kept that same notebook and I brought it back the second time and I was able to add to that. And that's kind of really taken my like preparation week by week. I'd say to the, to the next level, just listening to how Peyton and Eli prepared um, in the NFL. I love it. Well, Kenny, uh, best of luck. I just love the idea of a, a professional quarterback named Kenny. I think it's fucking awesome. Kenny Stabler, obviously, snake. So, uh, best of luck. Thank you again for winning my game of the year. Uh, actually, we you got to come back and come in person after the Heisman ceremony. You'll be here in New York. Let's go. Yes. I'm there. You better get invited. Kenny Pickett, if we can figure out a way to do a hashtag or, or stuff some ballots, Kenny Pickett to New York has to happen. Um, All the ballots. Baby. Yeah, do you, yes. have, do you have a Heisman moment yet? Yeah, my game of the year. I was having I mean, the, the <laughs> softball question. Yeah, like, that was <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was the game of the year. <laughs> Kenny Heisman. <laughs> yeah, Kenny Heisman, game of the year. <laughs> it is. All right, man. Thanks so much. Best of luck. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it for having me on. See you, man. Kenny Pickett was brought to you by our very, very good friends over at Coors Light. Love Coors Light. Love drinking it. Mountains were blue last night. Billy and I went out for some Korean barbecue. The mountains were very blue at the barbecue station. It's delicious. It's always good. It's the official beer of college football, the official beer of part of my take, and it's the official beer of chilling out. When everything's go, 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 it's nonstop hustle all the time. you got work, friends, family, a million pressing social issues. You have to be on 24-7. Sometimes you have to chill. Coors Light is made to chill. We love Coors Light. I love You know what I really love to do with Coors Light? It's about that time of year. Put it outside. Leave the case of beer outside. Let nature turn the mountains blue. It's God's refrigerator out there. Love Coors Light. Love it especially when you're pulling out of the snow. Love it when you're watching college football, when you're watching NFL football. No matter what, Coors Light is mountain cold refreshment, and it's always made to chill. It's the one that I choose when I need to unwind. So when you want to hit reset, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light in the new look, delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or with the Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Okay, we're going to wrap up the show with a little Wednesday reading. Uh, we've alluded to it. It is from our friend Dan Orlovsky. He dropped this blog. Now, I like Dan. Uh, this isn't supposed to be... Uh, mean towards Dan. I actually think that because we're going to bust his balls here, that means he's a friend of ours. But I still don't really understand where the, it came out of left field and it would be we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't talk about it. Yeah, it, it would honestly be uh, it'd be omission. People yes. would be like, why haven't you talked about the Dan Orlovsky blog yet? And frankly, I'll talk about any Dan Orlovsky blog. Yes. If he wants to write up a blog telling me about like maybe why uh, certain quarterbacks in the NFL are overrated this year, I'll read that. I also like the fact that Dan Orlovsky thinks Matt Nagy is being criminal towards Justin Fields. So mm -hmm. he will always have a special place in my heart. And he's always, you know what, we'll, we'll extend because we're going we're gonna to bust them up a good one. Just guys just busting each other up. Mm -hmm. I'll officially extend the offer if Dan Orlovsky wants to come on and talk quarterbacks and also how to not cheat on your wife. Or jack off. Or jack off. And you know what? We can present a counterpoint article. Four ways to jack off on the road. In yes, to him. In so hotels. when he comes yeah. on, we will tell him how we play offense yes. by jerking off all the time. So it's four ways to avoid temptation. First yeah. of all, right off the bat, guys love lists. So well, he has my attention. Oh, right off the bat, not only do guys love lists, but guys love analogies. So... Uh, we start with, in the NFL, I, I skipped the first part, but in the NFL, while defense is important, you won't win if you never score. And it's always easier to score while you're on offense. Well, that's true. With temptation being on Unless offense. Unless Dan Orlovsky is playing quarterback true, on the other team. True, true. We had to get sorry, that one in there. Sorry, Dan. He actually handles it well now. I think there was a moment in time where it bothered him, but I think he's on the other side of that. He's now. like, I got to own it. Well, you can easily own it by being like, I was in the NFL. Right. Like, that's kind of the for, Trump card on all losers on Twitter being like, well, I got played to play football. I played for 11 years yeah. in the NFL. Yeah. So, Pretty good Trump card. Yeah. yeah that's the Trump card. Uh, so, with temptation, being on offense is about avoiding temptation. How can you avoid temptation rather than put yourself in a position to have to resist it? Here are four ways to avoid temptation. Number one, 
focus on knowing yourself. I found that if I know my biggest struggles, I'm more likely to avoid them. What do you struggle with most? Whether it's temptation to get more money, more power, or more sex, it's important to be honest with yourself about it. Okay? All right, my only qualm with this is that uh, if you take knowing yourself in the biblical sense, mm -hmm. like Adam knew Eve, etc., He's just talking about jacking off. Yes. It's yes. important to know each other, which I agree with, Dan. He, I do too. I also, I, it's a little, again, this came out of left field, this blog, so I have to just say, like, the, the only temptations he listed were money, power, and sex. Yeah. What, what's on your mind, Dan? Well, money, power, sex, those are like the hierarchy of needs. Yeah. That's the top, like, if it's the food pyramid, that's the good part. That's the sweets, oils, and fats, baby. Oh, Jesus. I didn't even realize this. So uh, we'll have to, this is just going to be a... a this is probably going to be a recurring segment now because there's a hyperlink on more sex. So yep. it's money, power, or more sex. Hyperlink, more sex. It goes to an article that says 10 practical ways to battle your sexual temptations. No, I've been clicking One, all the... jerk off. Yeah, I've been clicking all the hyperlinks already. Yeah. I pre-clicked them, and some of them link to more all pro dad articles. Got it. Not by Dan, though. By other people. Got it. So, so that's so, that's not a Dan take. Quick, 10 practical ways to battle your sex, uh, sexual temptations. One, jerk off. Two, get so fat that your te your testosterone is limited and you don't even want to move. I would say three, uh, fall asleep after jerking off. Yes. Four, smoke some weed. Yeah, that's a good one. Because then you'll just probably be too lazy to have sex or jerk off. Five, blog. F six, Become a full-time blogger. Six, bet the over on a game. Yep. Uh, that's just like jerking off if you hit it. Uh, seven, just, uh, just don't jerk off. Eight, listen to part of my take. Yep. Nine. I think that's it. Those are the only ways to avoid temptation. Nine. Nine. Oh. Uh, no. Oh, wet dream. Nine. Okay. Wet dream. Good job. Hand job wet from dream. God. Yep. Uh, ten. Grow your hair out really long and don't shave for a while. Mm. It's really easy no to avoid. No one will even come close to jerking you off. It's really easy to avoid <laughs> sexual temptation that way. Um, all right. So we're back to the regular article, the main article. If you know what uh, you struggle with, you're better equipped to avoid it. I don't personally struggle with pornography. Again... I'm just going to throw a flag. Dan, you just wrote this blog out of nowhere, and you said you don't struggle with pornography. I'm sorry, but you're a porn guy. Well, who struggles with pornography? Pornography is the I, easiest uh, thing to not struggle with. What if, you're, you, if, no, you, if your Wi-Fi is not strong enough, and it's like the, the actual video is not loading? You don't get the preview? Yeah, it's not buffering correct, yeah. so it's kind of blurry. <laughs> That's a struggle with Wait, pornography. Hey, Scott. I don't think porn works on Wi-Fi. Oh. I always go no Wi-Fi. Interesting. I respectfully disagree. But that would be. I've had this problem where I'm like it's buffering. I'm like it's fucking Wi-Fi. They don't want me to. They don't want me. To, so oh, I just get off the Wi-Fi. Here's a struggle with pornography I've that had I have. I've conspiracy for a while. Sometimes when the thumbnail is different than what the actual video is, mm -hmm. and you're like, I was sold a weird bill of goods here. Sometimes, that's a struggle. That's a, that's a big one. Sometimes when you click on something and then it's like. Uh, stepbrother and stepsister. Yeah. It's like, wait, I didn't sign up for that. Yes. But they're, yes. Just, they're just hammering that into us these so, days. Oh, when uh, occasionally I'll struggle where they uh, change the angle of the scene at an inopportune time to what you're doing. You know, where it's like, hey, now it's just everyone's asshole. Or it's the guy. And I'm like about, you know, I'm the, almost there, Dan. The old school porn, it was the guy's face. When he was popping. It's yeah, like that's, yeah. I don't need that close There up, are sir. struggles. So there are struggles. Well, another, another big struggle with pornography that I, I've seen a couple times, um, or my friends have told me about uh, from them watching porn, mm -hmm. is there's a kind of porn out there where a girl just gets like stuck in a window. Yeah. She's very obviously not stuck in a window, but she's pretending that like her hands are stuck. And then a guy comes in, she's naked. She's like, oh, get me unstuck. Right. There's a whole unstuck thing. Unstuck. Yeah. But uh, and yeah. The best videos are at the bottom, but they're not even videos. Yeah. That's true. That's another struggle. But this is, uh, again, it's just a little weird to be like, hey, guys, just wanted to drop this blog out of nowhere saying I don't struggle with pornography, but it's here me, we are. It's me, Dan Orlovsky. Do you also have problems with the try not to come challenge? <laughs> yeah. I, I, okay, you don't struggle with pornography. All right. But he said, I, but I know a lot of guys who do. Us, we just listed all of the mm -hmm. ways. If you're one of them, be honest with yourself about your wandering eyes so you can fight that battle. I don't think porn is a wandering eye thing. No, my eyes are locked in one location. Yeah. Also, is that like, are, is it cheating on your wife if you watch porn? 
Yes. If you know the woman <laughs> yes. that's in the porn. Yes. If your if friends. You, if you've ever bought her something from her Amazon gift list. If you then that's cheating. If you own her lower body in a sex doll form. If you've ever if you ever paid money to Skype with her. Yes. Then that's then those cheating. are all cheating. Um, all right. So, but he says I know a lot of guys did. If you if you're one of them, be honest with yourself about your wandering eyes so you can fight that battle. Remember, you don't get points for having temptation. You win by avoiding it. I'm gonna. I'm going to politely disagree on this one. I think uh, watching porn is totally normal. Also, if you're in a committed relationship and you are challenged with temptation and you overcome it, does it aren't you running up the score against temptation at that point? Yeah. Like, if you're afraid of temptation, you're like, you don't want to play against them. Right. They're saying anytime, anywhere. Right. And you're ducking temptation. So oh, stiff breeze and temptation shows up. Yeah, exactly. You're scheduling cupcakes uh -huh. if you're not going up against temptation. Do you think... Uh, Dan is like when he slips up with the porn thing. He's like, "Listen, honey, I want to talk to you about something serious." He calls her. I went, I went on you, Uges last night. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, well, we'll have to do some counseling over this. Do we have any any Catholics in the room? Uh, Billy, Billy. I, I've always wondered how that how confession goes. If you have to confess your sins, porn? do you, do you have to like give the priest the entire rundown of like? Well, first I went to uges.com. So there's a, but there's then, a website called Blacked. But then, then <laughs> I, I left because the only, they didn't have, I've already seen all the 8th Street Latina videos on the front page. <laughs> so then I went over to Pornhub and, uh, and that was, that's really what did the trick. Or can you just say, I've been tempted and I failed? Billy lies in confession. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why we're, it's his practice for lying. <laughs> Priest is like, you know, you don't have to lie, Billy. He's like, oh shit, <laughs> Billy. Do you do you have you done confession recently? Not in a long time. Okay, um, was that a lie? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Number two, focus on staying busy. I travel most weeks for work. While I'm on the road, I will purposely leave work to do while I'm in my hotel room. So he leaves himself some extra work. During these times, I'm intentionally guarding against having idle time. I know myself, so I'm guarding against the temptation to lay around doing nothing and allowing my mind to wander to a place that it shouldn't. Again, this is like, dude, the best part about being on the road is you can just lay in your hotel bed, jerk off, and get room service. That's awesome. Falling asleep after jacking off in a hotel room <laughs> is maybe the best feeling ever. There's a reason why every hotel room has lotion. No, no one has lotion. Mm -hmm. Hotel rooms have I've, lotion. I don't think I've ever purchased lotion <laughs> no, in my life. No, hotel rooms are basically it's like a mini jerk off station. It's They're a, like here it is. Yeah, it's a private DIY. Uh, it's a it's a do it yourself amusement park. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So I try to do stuff related to my family. I'll I'll busy myself with re reviewing my kids' schedule, scroll through old photos of my wife and kids on my phone, or even order flowers for my wife. The point is to keep your focus. Sometimes keeping your focus is as simple as staying busy. Now I'll defend Dan on this. When I am on the road, I will oftentimes like look at old pictures of my family just because I miss them. Um, but that also doesn't stop. Like, there's no. It's not temptation driven. Mm -hmm. It's just I I love my family and I wish I was with them. It's not like, oh, I'm thinking about option one. I'm gonna go fuck some random person. Or option two, look at pictures of my kids. I just look at pictures of my kids because I love my kids. Right. Dan is basically saying that if if I'm left to my own devices in a hotel room. I'm just I'm gonna do something bad like if I don't have pictures of my he's kids. He's constantly yeah. guarding. He he has to remind himself that he has a family. Right. The entire time to not right. be tempted. Like I'm saying, Dan. Sometimes you got to meet temptation head on. Know that you can conquer it. Oklahoma that, drill with temptation. Okay, yeah, me versus you. Hat on a hat. Uh, and then the next sentence, he says, you got to focus on a hobby, or maybe you can just take a walk outside. Mm -hmm. I'm just imagining Dan in a hotel room, just just sweating, just like shaking because he's got this urge to just touch himself he's like i need to take a cool down walk outside yeah i he's just always pacing i every single trip i've ever taken on the road for work is basically the exact same thing show up to the hotel clog the toilet have to call down tell them to unclog the toilet lay in my bed for a while maybe with a dip in be like text you guys being like where should we get dinner go get dinner go back to my hotel watch whatever game i'm gambling on fall asleep jerk off fall asleep mm -hmm. that's it that's that's the exact playbook that's and there's never a moment where i'm like Where's the strange? I feel like most middle-aged men would look at that as the best vacation. It's, right? it's I, I, I do not need to stay busy. I actually love not being busy when I'm on the road. Uh, yeah, so he says, take a walk. If you don't want the temptation to follow you around, don't act as if you're interested in being tempted at all the time. The dad who stays busy will win over the dad who's teetering on the edge of temptation all 
day. I also th- I I will. Dan Orlovsky from afar seems like a very very good dad. I think he coaches his kids like so. That's nice that he's throwing that out there. Although I always wonder like. Do you think his kids one day will read this and be like, what's going on here? Yeah, maybe. I, and, and the part where he, he changes it up. So this started out as a battle, like you're playing a football game against temptation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's changed in this last section. It's now the dad who stays busy will win over the dad who's teetering on the edge of temptation. Which, again, are you teetering, Dan? Because you, you, you offered this. So he's saying, <laughs> he's saying that now it's a dad against dad competition. Right. He who go who abstains the longest without coming mm-hmm. is actually the better dad. is the better dad. Yes, I don't know if that's necessarily true. Philip Rivers would probably beg to differ yes, with that. Yes, absolutely. All right. So number three, focus on being in a community. When I'm traveling, I'm usually on the road with a group of people. Even even in the studio, there are lots of people around. So I'll often go out with a group to enjoy dinner rather than be alone. We'll tour a stadium or finish more preparation for work. And when I'm when I say I'm with a group, I mean group. John Kitna. Noted uh, porn PSA guy. Oh, no, that was Josh McCown. Yeah. John Kitna taught me to never be one-on-one with a female. <laughs> That's how you know that we're getting into the real meat of the take. Once the word female makes its first appearance. You can't be alone with a female because you'll probably fuck. Yeah, these hoes crazy is what <laughs> <Yeah>. Dan's saying. <laughs> do, you, do you think he's been one-on-one with a female and been like, I need to excuse myself? It's the Mike Pence rule. Yeah. yeah. If mother's not around, I, I cannot dine with you. I'm sorry. Yes. I think I actually think it's a pretty normal thing to be one on one with a female. And just, essentially cutting out fifty percent of the people that you can interact with yeah. if you have this rule. And most normal people, when they're hanging out with a female, aren't thinking this is a bad thing that I shouldn't be you, doing. Like, because yeah, if you about thi- to fuck. if you think it's a bad thing to be hanging out with a girl, in reality, you're acknowledging the fact that the girl is just a complete source of temptation yeah. for you and not just like hey i'm talking with a girl you you acknowledge that penis goes in vagina yeah uh, yeah <laughs> that's, that's pretty much what it's boiling down that's to, the like, subtext what, of any time dan is talking with a girl it's like you know PNV. We, like physically we could <laughs> it fits it does yeah these pieces <laughs> go together Dan should have gone to Purdue. That should have been the whole blog. I should have attended <laughs> yeah. Purdue. Mm-hmm. Um, never alone with a girl there. All right, so sorry if you Purdue fan, if you thought that you weren't going to get a shot randomly, here it is. Uh, all right, so four, focus on your family. Often I'm in my hotel. Oh, no, wait, there's more to three. Yep. Sorry. The point is the less time I have alone, the better, and that's true for all of us. Most guys I talk to fall into temptation when they're alone. The key might be spending your time around more people who will build you up, Find a group that has similar interests and spend time with them. You'll keep busy and be in a community. Double win. There is a double win. Okay. There. Well, it's also he's saying that you fall into temptation when you're alone, but you can't go out and if you like leave your hotel room and on your walk you see a woman who's also taking a walk. Well, that's outside. Yeah, but you're still alone with a woman walking. No, then you're with God. Okay, got it. But if God you lives outside. in the hallway, you step in the hallway. There's a woman. That's in the a hallway. problem. Do you sprint back in the room? Go back in. Or do you... But then you're alone. Take the stairs. But then you're alone. Yeah. No, I see what you're saying. It's tough. Box yourself in. It's tough out there with these females. Yes. All right. Number four, focus on your family. Often, if I'm in my hotel just hanging out while traveling, in addition to what I already mentioned, I have a habit of FaceTiming with my wife and kids. I'll call while they're watching TV, playing a game, or hanging out at the house. I'll simply hold the phone and watch them. It's like I'm in the house with them. It's a small way to connect with the people most important in my life and to hold myself accountable. I actually have no problem with this paragraph. No, That's nice. totally normal. I do similar things. That one plays. It's nice. The only thing is it, it could also be read that Dan, whenever he is really feeling the urge... That's when he FaceTimes. And so you know when you're getting the call from Dan, it's like it's like a What's going person on? alcoholic yeah. I was calling the sponsor. It's like yeah. I've got a boner. Dan's got a boner again. Yeah. What's going on here? All right. So whether you travel for work or not, how are you keeping your focus on your family? You can say your family is important, but how do you show it? How are you connecting with them? Avoiding temptation comes down to a battle of your mind and thoughts. So why not focus on your family? The more time your mind is on something other than your temptation, the better. So um yeah, again, I this was really random. It, it came it, out of nowhere. It, it came out of. Uh, it, it felt like, uh, hey guys, I'm having, I'm having some thoughts about watching some porn. I need to get this off my chest so I don't. Yeah, I, I actually think that most of what he says is harmless, and it sounds oh, like 100% it sounds harmless. it sounds like he's being a a good dad and a good father and just a, trying to be a good person. But I think I think a lot of us out there, Dan, um, when I woke up at least last week on I think it was Tuesday morning. 
I, I was not asking myself, how does Dan avoid jacking off in hotel mm-hmm. rooms? Yep. But, but now I'm always going to be wondering that. Like when he's on the road, when they send Dan on assignments, I'm going to be wondering, like, how much time is Dan spending alone? Dan, if you ever need to talk to anybody on the road, yep. uh, just you can, you can tweet at us. We'll have a conversation with you if you're experiencing temptation. We'll walk you through it. We'll give you some of our advice about how to avoid feeling horny. Yes. Just call us. Listen to part of my take. Yeah, you, you can it's FaceTime the least, us. Yeah, you, if you listen to part of my take, you'll never want to fuck again. It's a fact. It's a fact. It is absolutely, it's the anti-testosterone uh, drug. Just skip guys on chicks. Yeah. But Dan, um, we, we will, this is our official invitation for Dan to come on and we can give him tips on how to jerk off better. Mm-hmm. That how, will be, and then we'll break down some film. We'll, we'll really give you tips about how to destigmatize jacking off to the point where it's not even a sexual thing. Yes. It's just like a, just a thing that you do to pass the time. Also, I noticed, it's a hobby. I noticed, Dan, you didn't, you didn't list, uh, just watch the all 22. Mm. That's pretty, there's a lot of all 22, is there not? That's probably why he does, yeah, there's a, a ton of all there's 22. There's endless not amounts hours. of all 22. That's his problem with pornography is it doesn't show enough of the actual <laughs> sex that's going on. You just get the close-ups. Oh, God. And you're like, oh, I could do that. But then when you see the entire room, you've got the cameraman, you've got the gaffers, all this stuff, the lighting guy. And it's actually a lot more difficult to participate in porn once you see the whole field. I would like to actually know uh, maybe like a little rating in the bottom right of Dan's uh, breakdown of all 22. Like how horny was he when he was breaking that down? Carson Wentz. Scale to one. 11 out of 10. 11 out of 10. Yes. Yes. Um, all right. That is our show. Should we do numbers? Any Anything else, Billy? There's a chimpanzee in Spain that's addicted to watching pornography. Really? Respect. Of the human get kind. Him, get him this fucking blog. I'll send it to her. <laughs> her! her. Oh, right. Wow, the look at that. A My toxic masculinity showing. Wow. I respect that. It's actually a good point. Why didn't Dan write, write this to women, too? Yeah. They want to jerk off all the time. Uh, should we play Brotherhood Bingo? <laughs> what number? What, what do we got? For 87. Numbers? Monkey 69. butt. I want to play monkey butt. Eight. 97. 18. 23 is out. How many numbers we got left, Jake? 6, 20, 22, 26, 27, 29, 49, 51, 76, 78, 81, 88, 97. How many is that? 13. 13, 97. I'm going to get 97. We're 69. Are we? Yep. 87. Or 88. Remember when you stole the ball? 88. 87. 88. 46. That feels like a million times. We've had that. Feels like a million times. You're confusing it with 47, which oh, is the wow. seven-time champ. You 46 boon. is now the fourth time, though. So Got okay. it. Yeah. Got it. Love you guys.